turn now right <laughs> okay well happy sabbath everyone it's so nice to have you guys here today um uh i'm going to be given my presentation and the title of my presentation is called the united regions of ghana working together to build off of what we have but before i start let me just try and share the screen hold on i'm just uh getting some logistical work done here so let me share my screen. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, all right, there it is. There it goes. Great. So happy Sabbath, everyone. It's like I said before, it's nice to have you all here. So the United Regions of Ghana working together to build off of what we have. Now, as you see here, here's a map of the 10 regions of Ghana. Now, we know right now there is more than 10. So I know some of you are like, hey, Gabor, why'd you put 10 up there? I know there's been changes, but today um, I'm gonna talk about um, three different things. Um, but before I go into that, let me just do a recap of what we were talking about yesterday. So for those of you who weren't here yesterday and missed the presentation, basically we were talking about the history of Ghana and where we come from and cherishing our past. The, um, you know, it's interesting to note, we've been wealthier longer, much longer than we've been poor. You know, we've came from great empires like the Ghana Empire, the Mali Empire and the Ashanti Empire. Yes, and we had hardships with slavery and colonialism, but we fiercely fought it, but okay, that's nice and good and everything. But what about now? You know, right now, this is the year 2021. What do we Ghanaians have now? And so I'm going to just touch a little bit on some of the good things that we have now. Um, so on the key, key concepts, the direction of this presentation. So what the world has noticed about Ghana, I'm gonna focus on influential Ghanaians and then each region specifically. Now, like I said, I'm going to be doing the 10, 10 regions instead of 16 because, you know, it's, it takes a lot of time to, to do uh, every, all 16 regions individually. So I'm just going to focus on the, the 10 main regions. All right, so um, this, was, this was not, sorry, let me move this out the way. All right, so um, the year of, in 2019, something very significant in Ghanaian history happened. You know, for a long time, we had never ever thought of Ghana. Most people, even Ghanaians, had never really thought of Ghana as a tourist destination. Um, but in 2019, the government of Ghana they made a had a celebration called the Year of Return or commemorative event called the Year of Return, and this basically was commemorating the arrival of the first enslaved Africans to the US. In, two, in 1619, the first enslaved Africans landed in uh, Jamestown, what is present day Virginia. So the government decided to have a little pro to, to have an event that would commemorate that. 
little did they know that this would be something that would be so huge. In just one year alone, Ghana made $2 billion from tourism, especially towards the end of the year. Many Black Americans, not just Black Americans, but Black British, Black, community, uh, Black Caribbeans, and also Ghanaians as well abroad came to Ghana to commemorate that event. And it forever changed the way that the world had looked about looked at Ghana, including the way a lot of Ghanaians had looked at themselves. Um, even today, currently, there are more Black Americans in Ghana than any other African country. And for you know, for a lot of Ghanaians, they they find it very strange because, you know, we always we as Ghanaians we always you know like to go abroad. What do they see in our country? What do outsiders see in our country? And what what are the good things that Ghana has? And in many people's eyes, they they Ghana has a lot to offer. So you know, if you watch uh, certain YouTube channels like Wodemaya, I'll explain who he is later on. Many African Americans and many African people of African descent and just people in general really, really love Ghana. Um, for example, here's a picture of a young lady. She went to Ghana. She just decided to come for two weeks and visit. <laughs> she, instead of just staying for two weeks, she changed her flight ticket and said, you know what? I want to stay here for six weeks. There was one person in Ghana. They decided just to visit for a few weeks. They ended up staying for six months. Some people, they say, you know what? I don't even want to go back to where I live. I'm going to, to move to Ghana. Many, in, right now, many people are even talking about moving to Ghana. For example, I don't know if you all were watching um, the news. Stevie, Stevie Wonder, you know, he's made the announcement that he is moving to Ghana. And you would be amazed at the amount of celebrities, especially Nollywood celebrities who have second homes in Ghana. Uh, famous people like Wizkid, uh, Genevieve Naji. All these different people have homes in Ghana and love Ghana. You know, like you can see here, um, I'm a Nigerian and I wish, sincerely wish there was a way, better way to say thank you for making, for thank you Ghana for making the black race proud. God bless you guys. Um, and someone says, who needs Wakanda when we already have Ghana? Now for us as Ghanaians, you know all the stuff we say about Ghana, Ghana is this, Ghana is that, Ghana, there's no hope. You know, this might be very strange. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about many different um, aspects for success in a society. Um, let me just ask you all this question. Well, I'll make it rhetorical. In 2016, Forbes did a, a survey of the top uh, 500, Fortune 500 companies. And they said, what is the most, if there is one thing, you can't pick two or three things. If there is one thing that you would uh, say is a key to success in your company, what would it be? And they came up with one thing. And the most, well, sorry, the most common answer that people said was unity, getting along. And you know, in Ghanaian culture, historically, un unity has, very, has been very important for us. Um, for example, if you see this, this is, a, sorry, no. Sorry, this is an Adinkra symbol. Um, it says, let me try and pronounce it. Like basically, uh, sorry. <laughs> like basically, unity and diversity. You have two. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you have two crocodiles. They're going in different directions. It talks about the diversity of people. Somebody's doing this, somebody's doing to this, but together we're all together. And that reminds me of the verse in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. It says, I appeal to you brothers by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, that you be united, you be united in the same mind, in the same judgment. People in Ghana, people notice certain things about Ghanaian people. They said, they liked the friendliness of Ghanaians. They liked the, 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 the family spirit of Ghanaian people. And like I said before, there's a big strong power in unity. You know, some of the world's biggest empires, United Kingdom, United States, the United Kingdom, the world's biggest empire, the United States, the world's biggest superpower, United Arab Emirates, the most extravagant place on earth. These are, all, it's a very important ingredient. 
And then the, another thing is confidence. You know, they, they, they enjoyed that Ghanaian people seem to hold on to, to their culture. Because, you know, there's a value in valuing what you have. And then there's also a danger in not valuing what you have. And we'll talk about that later, you know. What's the point of imitating others when there's a real thing? And so, you know, if you look at other countries, they've profited from valuing what they have. You know, everybody goes to China to see the Great Wall. We don't go to China to see the pyramids. If you want to go to the pyramids, you go to Egypt. People go to France to see French culture. So people like to come to Ghana to see Ghanaian culture. And we've given them lots of Ghanaian culture. They love giving them lots of the positive aspects of Ghanaian culture. They like, they said they like the polite hospital nature of people like um, uncle said before, um, you know, the culture, the dress and the fashion, so many different things about Ghana, the festivals, the food, so much. And, um, you know, even right now, if you go to YouTube and type in Ghana, Ghana is one of the most popular countries in Africa right now, just because of what happened in 2019. And, and it's, it's interesting because Ghana has always been there. But now people are almost treating Ghana like it's some brand new discovered planet. And you have people on YouTube going around just shooting videos of themselves in Ghana and they get tons of subscribers and visitors and people chatting. And so it's, it's amazing to see how, you know, Ghana has, has um, emerged again. You know, we've, we've come through, we've went through so much in the past 60 years, but it seems like Ghana's things are sort of, uh, getting better in certain respects. You know, we've always been a land of first. Um, first country to become independent. Um, you know, first country in Sub-Saharan Africa to trade with Europeans. And even now we're, we're still, you know, moving forward with technology. So for example, they have what you call the QR code. Um, the only three countries in the world that do that, Singapore, India, and Ghana, where you can just pay for things with your smartphone. And just if they have the QR code, like you see here, um, you don't even need to use cash or anything like that. People said they like Ghanaian, you know, right now Ghana's starting to make its own chocolate. Ghanaians are making, and it's not just, you know, rinky dinky chocolate, but world-class custom chocolate, like Bioko chocolate. One Ghanaian lady from the Shanti region, and then two sisters from Cape Coast, they made what you call 57 chocolate. And, you know, a lot of people are impressed with what Ghanaians are doing. Now, the uh, next thing I'm going to show is just what are what are some things other Ghanaians are doing around the world. So not just in Ghana, but around the world. Now, we all have heard about Kwame Nkrumah and his impact, not just in Africa, not even just in, uh, not just in Ghana, not just in Africa, but worldwide. Um, and, you know, I could literally talk about him until three o'clock in the morning, but a con as a concession to time and the bre brevity of life, I'm going to focus on other Ghanaians as well. We all know Kofi Annan, UN Secretary General. They said that he was Africa's greatest diplomat of all time. You know, he was credited for handling situations and crises and reforms at the UN in the most calm, efficient way. He, he, he was considered not just one of the best African diplomats, but one of the best UN Secretary Generals of all time, Ghanaian. Um, we all know Idris Elba. He's one of the top um, actresses I mean, actors in Hollywood. And, you know, he was named in the Times 100 list as one of the most influential people, Ghanaian. And I don't know if you all have heard about this person. Me, I like, architect I like architecture, so he's one of my heroes. He is considered one of the top 10 architects in the entire planet. He's, he's a superstar architect, David Ajay. Um, he's Ghanaian. He lives in England, though. Um, he designed the National Museum of African American History in Washington, D.C. Um, he designed the Nobel Peace Prize Center in Norway. Um, also, the Wall Street Tower, which they're building in New York City, he designed that. Um, this um, art complex in Beirut, Lebanon, he also designed that in Moscow School of Technology. These are just some of the buildings that he's built. He's considered one of, not even the top 10, one of the top five architects right now in the world, and he's Ghanaian. Um, you have Dr. Thomas Mensa. He's considered the father of op fiber optics. What does that mean? You would not be able to even send text messages on your phone if it wasn't for this guy. He worked at IBM, and him and a team of two other people worked to develop um, 
laser fiber op I was kind of hard because that's not my field, but laser fiber optics. He has 14 patents. They put him in the National Inventors Hall. Of, he, right now, he's in the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, they put him there in 2015. He is Ghanaian from Kumasi. Um, Oswell Boateng, um, one of the top 10, one of the top best fashion designers. He was the first black owned business on Savile Row in London. If um, you know, if anyone who's specialized in fashion know how big deal, big of a deal Savile Row in London is. It's one of the, the most important areas for fashion designers. And he was able to be the first black person to, to be featured, to have his business on there. And uh, he was only 28 when he started. Major fashion designer. He dresses the top celebrities all over the world. And then we ha also have another fashion designer from Ghana as well, Virgil Abloh. Um, the younger people probably have heard about him because you know he is, um, Kanye West uses a lot of his designs and whatnot, but he works at Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton is the world's biggest fashion design company. And um, he, is the, he, he is their creative, right now he's currently working um, as their creative director. So he's, he's, design, he's behind a lot of the designs at Louis Vuitton, he's Ghanaian. Christy Brown as well. Um, she's also a fashion des, uh, designer. Uh, she runs a major fashion company in Ghana um, called Christy Brown. Many celebrities from Naomi, Naomi Campbell, Beyonce, have used her um, have, have used her outfits. She's a Ghanaian. Frederick Swanaker, he's another major um, person in, Af in on the African field as well. Um, he's built three universities already. So one in Mauritius, one in South Africa, and then one in Rwanda. And so, um, you know, he's, um, he wants to build 25 universities in Africa. His university is called African Leadership University because he feels that, you know, education is the key to um, changing Africa's situation. And so he's very passionate. He graduated from Stanford. Um, CNN Magazine uh, has listed him as one of the, I think it was last year or this year, sorry, the, two years ago, CNN listed him as one of the most influential people, top 100 influential people on this planet, Ghanaian. And then we have another university builder, Patrick Aria. He, um, he started at Chasse University and he used to work at Microsoft. He decided that, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go back to Ghana and use my knowledge to build a university. And Ashesi University is uh, one of the most attractive schools in the whole region. People come all over West Africa to come and learn, not even West Africa, all over Africa to come and learn in Ashesi University. Top-notch university, very modern. It's, it doesn't look any different from the universities you see here in America. And so Ghana is becoming a center of education. Um, you know, it has the second highest percentage of college educated people in Africa after Botswana. Um, growing up, we have um, a lot of people from French African countries are coming to Ghana because they're learning, they want to learn English. Um, you know, and many sc schools in Ghana have, certain high schools in Ghana have won um, reward awards, such as ro uh, particularly in robotics. So Ghana is beginning to develop a name in itself in that. And then Isaiah Blankson, he's, um, it's hard to even describe how amazing he is. He was, a, he's not a scientist anymore at NASA, but he was. And a lot of the inventions that they made in NASA, the, the rocket ships and all these things, a lot of them were developed by this guy. And he has received just rewards all over the place. Um, the, here are some of the inventions. I don't know if any of you really, um, really understand what these are about, because I barely do, but th this is just something that I found interesting. So he invented exoskeletal gas turbine engine, magneto hydrodynamic power. Um, he developed a method for weakening shockwave strengths on vehicles in supersonic atmospheric flight. So many different things. He received in 2012 a presidential rank, presidential reward, um, meritorious senior professional award, Rewards from MIT, rewards from NASA. He was one of their star players. He is, um, he's a Ghanaian, Isaiah Blankston. And of course, um, in sports, we have so many major uh, sports players like Mario Balotelli, Tony Yeboah, Abedi Pelli, 
You know, Ghana's sports team is one of the top teams in all of Africa. I'm sorry, Ghana's soccer team. Also, going back to science, we have another man named Ashte Trebu Olenu. He was also he was actually in charge of Mars Missions Robotics team. He's also Ghanaian. Now, the good thing about him, him is that he actually, when he he retired from working at NASA and he came back to Ghana, and he started he trained um, the girls he, he trained some girls from Wesley College in robotics. And Ghana is actually becoming a major place for robotics. And they actually won the Robo, RoboFest uh, contest in the United States in 2019. All these girls were trained by this man. So he's an example of a Ghanaian who's given back to his uh, country. This man is named Kwame Adu he's, um, he's He's also based in Stanford University. And he's been working on things such as artificial intelligence. They're trying, he's really been, in, um, he, he, he has been working to try to cure blindness. He's also Ghanaian. Bernard Ribeiro, a British surgeon, he was actually president of the Royal College of Surgeons in England, one of the top, royal, uh, one of the top um, medical schools in the world, um, Ghanaian man. Joe France, he was, um, he worked in, he was based, he's a Ghanaian who is based in Sweden. He actually worked as a senior political advisor to the deputy, the, uh, the mayor of Stockholm and press secretary to the mayor of Stock Stockholm as well in Sweden, European Sweden. He's a Ghanaian as well. Adam Afriye, he's a, he was a member of parliament in, um, in the UK. He's a Ghanaian as well. Paul Botting, he was the first British cabinet minister in all of the UK um, in 2002. He also served as chief, chief secretary to the treasury. He was a Ghanaian. Even to today, we have actually have four Ghanaian MPs who are, who are males and females working, um, working as MPs in, in, in the UK. And they're all Ghanaian, of course. And even the young people are doing, many young people in, uh, of Ghanaian descent are doing very well. I don't know if you, heard about Kwesi Enin. He was the first person in the US accepted to all Ivy Leagues. All, all of them. He made a um, application. Nobody, from what I heard, nobody has ever been able to do that. Um, and then, well, at this time, he was the first person. There were so many other people who, who were able to do that later on, but he was actually the first person in, in American history to be in vet, accepted to all Ivy Leagues if I'm not mistaken. Imagine that. Now, I mean, universities like Harvard. Harvard is the hardest school in the world to get into. Well, they only accept two people, 2% 2 of people, but he was able not only to get in, but to get into all the Ivy League schools. And then there's more. There, even now there's more Ghanaian young people getting um, accepted into all Ivy Leagues and just doing very awesome in school. Like Jeremy Botre from here in Houston, Carolyn Asari Darty, and then Kyle Ayisi. All of them got accepted to all the Ivy Leagues. We have young people like um, uh, Gloria Sardou. She got a PhD at the age of 27. And then you were speaking of Sardou, um, there's a man named er Idris Sardou. He worked at um, Uber. He's, um, he made many different algorithms that helped Uber, Instagram, and Snapchat to be what they are today in, in many respects. He's a very young man. Um, he actually received the Honorary Presidential Scholar Award. And um, one thing that he was influential in doing was making the world's first smart store. And so he worked together with a rapper named Nipsey Hussle in Los Angeles, who's recently killed. Well, I won't say recently, a few years, I think two years ago he was killed. But um, he, he was a major player behind that. His name is Idris Sadu. He's another Ghanaian. Another inventor, he, Victor Lawrence, he helped make the internet faster with his invention in signal processing communications. It's another Ghanaian. Another inventor from Ghana as well. He was actually runner up for the Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology. He is the one that invented the Obochi drug, which uh, found the cure for Guinea worm disease. Another Ghanaian as well. So, you know, people say Ghana is a small country, but many people have big minds. We don't let the size of our country, we don't let, uh, you know, our circumstances de define us. We always uh, feel that we want something greater. You know, um, there's this uh, singer in Ghana, his name is Kitty. He made the phrase, my people are hardworking because we always have to, we always want to attain and achieve something. You know, first country to be independent 
In 2011, 2019, Ghana was the world's fastest growing economy. We have the highest percentage of female entrepreneurs at 46%. And then also, um, also what uh, um, Mr. Kojo was saying um, in, in, his, in his sermon or his speech, Ghanaian immigrants, they said Ghanaians are the hardest working immigrants based on the fact that, that we have the highest employment rate. And even now, about 50% of Ghanaians in America have a university degree, which is even higher than the national average. So, so many things, not just that, but, um, you know, everything we have to do with the biggest, the best, we, 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 we strive to, to, to make a name for ourselves because we know that we can always do better and we can always uh, achieve more, um, regardless of whether we're rich or poor, wherever we are, we always have that zeal to do well. We, you know, we created Lake Volta. Lake Volta is the largest man-made lake in the world. Who created that? Ghanaian. So, you know, um, we, we've done good for ourselves in many aspects. Um, now, so I'm gonna, now I'm gonna focus on each region and um, what each region is good for and what, what, sort of, what are some of the attributes and talents that the different regions are gonna have. Well, you have the greater Accra region. Um, but let, sorry, like I was saying before, I'm not going to the go based off of the 16, but based off of the 10 original regions um, of Ghana. So we'll start with the greater Accra region. That's where most people start. Um, you know, Accra, the greater Accra region is the center of everything. I won't say everything, but it's the capital and largest city. So, so many things are based in Accra, you know. Um, it's the political center, it's the tourist center, it's the business center. There's some, it's, it's, it's the media center of Ghana. And sometimes people complain, they say, oh, you know, everything's in Accra, but that's not always the case in certain respects. But, you know, what is Accra famous for? You know, Accra is famous for producing some of the best boxers in the world, you know, the fantasy coffins, um, the art festivals, like the Chali Wate Festival, which is the street, biggest, street art, st biggest street art festival in all of Africa, not just Ghana, almost 100,000 people come. Um, and it's interesting to note that Accra, Ghana has seen, uh, has been adding more millionaires faster than any other African city. Um, they say the number of millionaires in Accra is expected to grow in, yeah, in Ghana and Accra in general is expected to grow by 78% in the year 2025. And so um, that's the highest in all of Africa. Um, so, you know, in, in Kenya, it's, so Ghana is 78%, Kenya is 71, Lagos is 46%. So um, because of that, um, real estate, for example, is booming in Accra. It's one of the top industries. Oh, I would say one of the top ways to achieve wealth. These buildings are all in Accra. They've been built. These are, so you have IE Mensa Park, um, Forster Park, and then Bel Air Park. These were all built by Ghanaians who had lived abroad and decided to come back and build in Ghana. And it looks just like any other place you would see in the West or East or Asia or anywhere like that. They're building more of that into Ghana. In fact, they're saying, you know, we don't want to build boring buildings anymore. We want to build exciting buildings. We want to build buildings that will be on the cover of magazines. And so, you know, like I was saying before with the Shanti Empire, people were known for their architecture. Now that is happening happening again in Ghana, in more modern terms. Um, and of course, this is attracting lots of foreign investment. Um, for example, this man is Adink Asar of Acacia Limited. He said, Ghana is one of the top, among the top 10 countries in the world for property investment. So for example, when you buy an apartment and want to rent it in Europe, you will see a return 25 or 30 years later. In the UAE may be 15 years. In other countries, mostly 25 years maybe 20 years in some. But in Ghana, for example, if you buy a studio or one bedroom, you will get your money back in only eight years. Only eight. So if you buy a two bedroom apartment, you'll get it 10 years later. If you buy the correct apartment at the correct location, if you work with the correct developer, you will make a perfect, perfect investment. By the way, this is the building that he built in Cantonments. It's called Pearl in the City. And so, He's not just uh, saying it just for fun. This is based off of what he did. This is based off of his experience. So just imagine, Ghana is even better than UAE, Dubai, and Europe. 
to for real estate. And so, but you know, there's more to Ghana than just Accra. You have the Ashanti region, um, as we described. Um, you know, it's famous for many different things. It's uh, the center of the gold mining in Ghana. It's the center of timber. 50% of the timber comes from this region. A lot of the cocoa. Um, it's the second largest yam producer in all of Africa. This area produces more yams than anywhere else. And then also, later on, it's also, um, at, it's also becoming a manufacturing center as well. And so, um, yeah, and it's the largest region in terms of population. So, um, yeah, many, um, and of course it's known for being the home of the Shanti empire. And so this is, uh, it's still famous for gold and the center for um, uh, the Shanti people. And so, as you see here, um, it's home to the Shanti Hine. The Santi Hine is considered the most, the second most powerful man in Ghana after the president. You know, he's held in great respect. So you're not allowed to disrespect him. Um, you know, he has the power to remove or distill chiefs. Many places are named after him. And um, after the, not just him, but the different Asante Kings. And he resolves even disputes between other tribes or other ethnic groups in Ghana, like people in the North. There was a major conflict with the chieftaincy in between the northern groups, and he was able to resolve that. So he has a lot of influence. And uh, if you go to uh, Kumasi, you'll see Kejita. Kejita is the biggest covered market in the, is one of the biggest, if not the biggest covered markets in the world. Right now, Kejita market has almost 15,000 stalls. This is the new one they built. I, I dare you to find any place bigger. Chatu Chak market in um, Thailand, it has about 12,000. The one in Turkey, um, one of the major bazaars in Turkey, is about 4,000. This one is 15,000. Even in America, you can't find anything that can compare to this size. This is in Kumase, Ghana. And they just finished building Ike's Cafe and Grill in Kumase. It's one of the, it's actually the largest restaurant in Afri West Africa. They haven't built, finished building every part of it. It's still open for business. 500 seats. When it's completed, it's going to be the largest restaurant in West Africa. And you can go there and you have, you can, they have little fish and catfish that you can pick out there and just um, kill and eat at the same time. You have Bonri, carrot. I'm not saying, I'm not sorry if I'm saying it right. Bonri, Bonri, Kente village. And you can go and see the, the birthplace of Kente in uh, Kente cloth in Ghana. And you, of course, like I was saying before, it was the home of the Ashanti Empire. So, okay. All right. So, next we go through the Eastern region. And so, um, people say it's the, in the um, that is where we, we produce a lot of the bauxite. Bauxite, you use box, bauxite is very important because you use it to make um, aluminum and uh, steel. And so it's home to bauxite, manganese, which is also used to make steel, diamonds. Yes, they have diamonds in Ghana. It's uh, Akosombo Dam. So many different things are in Eastern region. And one thing that people like about the Eastern region is that it's very calm. There's a certain le level of calmness in the eastern region, especially in the Aquapim areas. You know, they say Aquapim people are very calm and very polite, and one of the most polite people you ever meet. Um, and it's just a very beautiful place to be. You have the Buri Gardens. Um, Abri, it's one of the most nicest, uh, attractive towns in Ghana. And then you have another town called Akosombo. It's close, Akosombo is like, it's close to the um, Akosombo Dam. And one good thing about this place, it's one of the cleanest places in Ghana and they don't have to worry about power cuts at all because they're right next to the, the Volta Dam. And then yet, like I was saying before, Ghana is home, this is the part of Ghana that's home to the bauxite. And you use bauxite is very important because you use it to make steel and aluminum. And Ghana, they sell, Ghana is almost home to, in just bauxite alone, bauxite reserves. Um, Ghana has reserves of almost 460 billion dollars of bauxite. You can look it up, $460, $460 billion worth of bauxite. Why do we have to, why should we even be part of <laughs> $460 billion? Why are we even struggling? I don't know. And then of course, um, like I said, this is the part of Ghana that also produces diamonds. If you go to Aquantia, that's where the part of Ghana that pr produces diamonds. And it's also the paragliding capital of Africa. They have the paragliding festival in, in Kaukau. Um, and then it's also home to the biggest hotel in Africa, Rock City Hotel. It was built by this man named Brian Achampo. 
Um, and, um, you know, he has a philosophy. He says, I was born to do business because that is what my people do. I like that. Um, and then you have the Northern region. What is the Northern region famous for? Well, of course, um, you know, it's home to very interesting architecture. I always like their traditional architecture. Um, you know, it's home to Mole National Park, the biggest national park in Ghana. Yes, so a lot of times we don't think that, oh yeah, are there tiger, not, are there elephants and lions and wildlife in Ghana? Yes, you go to Mole National Park. And um, you know, the, the North, this is the home of the Dagbon people. And so they're very good with, um, well, sorry, the Dagom, Dagomba people. They're very good with horses and they have many interest, interesting um, festivals um, and, and shows with the horses. All right, and so this is also the part of Ghana that is home to, that produces shea butter. Um, shea butter is very popular around the world because it keeps their skin smooth and young um, and you know makes people look younger. But you know, it's interesting Ghana, a lot of people never really valued shea butter, you know? But in, in, the, in, in the rest of the world, people are selling it. There is one man, um, he's an African American, he's almost become a billionaire selling shea butter in, in America, but in Ghana, people just look at it because like it's nothing, they wanna get stuff from the West. It's very ironic, but if you want shea butter, this is the place to go. And it's also the cotton capital of Ghana. This is where they produce the most cotton. All right, and then the Western region. Um, this is this part of Ghana is home, is probably one of the most resource rich regions. Now, of course, I know it's been broken up into smaller regions, but for, the, for, for purposes, I'm just going to say, um, refer to it as the Western region. Um, so, you know, the capital is Takwade, um, and there's many different industries there. You have oil, cocoa, manganese, um, cement, rubber, iron ore, and it's also the home of Kwame Nkrumah. And um, so, for example, if you go to this part, you'll see, uh, if you go to this town called Nkrofu, that is uh, his hometown. And yes, that was where it all happened. Um, the, the, the birthplace of Ghana's first president. It's also home for known for many beautiful beaches, some of the most nicest beaches in all of Ghana, like Bakanta Beach and so many others as well. Aksim, that's on the Western region. If you go there, you'll see a town called Nsuleso, which basically is a mispronunciation in Suroeso, like on literally means on the water because it's a town built entirely on water. And so um, it's known for producing a lot of cocoa and um, you know, it's known for producing a lot of oil and cocoa. And by the way, here's a, a fun fact. Most of Ghana's oil goes to India and most of Ghana's cocoa goes to countries like Switzerland and the Netherlands. Also, it is home to, it also produces the most rubber in Ghana. So if you want to make a rubber factory, you gotta go to the Western region. Another region that got broken up recently is the Brung Ohafo region. They consider that um, area to be the food basket of Ghana. Um, and it's, um, it's basically an agricultural area. They produce, it's a very good area for farming. It's also almost, it's also um, famous for Sunyani. I don't know how many of you all have been to Sunyani, but I haven't, but I've heard that Sunyani is actually considered to be the cleanest city in all of Ghana. So, you know, a lot of time people say Ghana is dirty and blah. some parts are dirty, but some places like Sunyani, Akosombo, um, and, um, Abri as well are very clean cities and Sunyani is one of the, the cleanest because it's basically in the culture, if they see you throwing trash on the floor, it's very deeply frowned upon. So it's one of the cleanest. And then that's also where you get a lot of good soccer players from as well. Somewhat John, uh, Emmanuel Ajiman Beidou and John Pinsel. These are all people from the Bronga Hafa region. Then you have beautiful Kintampo waterfalls. Um, and then you have Central Region. Central Region is known um, for its festivals like the Masquerade Festival. And it's also where the, uh, the place where the, many of the slave castles were built. It's also famous because um, they have a lot of, uh, you know, they have major universities there like University of Winneba and Cape Coast University. So they said that part of Ghana, people actually speak the best English out of all the regions in Ghana, they speak the best English. Um, so yes, it's, very, it's known as a historical site and it's home to the two most famous slave dungeons in Ghana, uh, the Cape Coast and Elmina. This is where many people were enslaved and taken to the New World. And then you have the Volta region. Um, the Volta region is, um, is very, it's very um, diverse. You have tall mountains, 
and waterfalls. It's home to the, actually the tallest mountain in all of Ghana. Um, then there, you have Wilif waterfalls. It's um, the tallest waterfall in West Africa. And you, and you really have nice beaches as well, like Keta Beach, very clean, beautiful beaches. So yes, Ghana does have nice beaches. Um, and yeah, also this is where Jerry Rollins' mother was from as well. Um, okay, and then you have Upper East Region. Um, this is home to, um, the, the main industries there are tomatoes, tourism, and baskets, boga baskets. And I'll explain what that is later on. Um, and it's very famous for being the part of Ghana where people, like we, we mentioned yesterday, where people can tame crocodiles. I mean, that's just amazing. Because <laughs> if you know anything about crocodiles, crocodiles are one of the most vicious animals you will ever see. And for people to actually be able to tame a crocodile and just make it behave like it's a little soft, tame puppy is nothing short of amazing. And so that's what they've been able to do in Paga. It's also home to the Bugum Chugu Festival where people dance in fire and don't get hurt. I don't know what their secret behind that is, but don't try it at home, kids. And then also the bo bo Boga baskets from Boga, Boga Tanga. Um, now these baskets, many of us probably have never heard about them, but they are extremely popular with people in the West. Um, many people like boga baskets. Um, what are they? Um, so they're in Northern Ghana and they're just very elaborately designed. In fact, even Michelle Obama has one. And um, they're, they've been very popular. I've even seen here in uh, Texas, uh, one of the farmer's markets, they were selling boga baskets. And you even have people from Asia coming in and making copies of boga baskets. But the thing about boga baskets is not only are they well designed, but they're also very durable. And it's the people in the North that um, design these baskets. Um, and then the Upper West region, this is home to Hilaliman. Now it's actually one of the poorest regions in the, re in the country. Um, but, um, you know, for example, they do have um, a certain, um, they have a strong Muslim culture and it's, um, is primarily agricultural, but one of the things people do struggle is with is poverty. But um, yeah, so in other words, Ghana is, to make a long story short, Ghana is a very blessed country. We have so many natural resources. We have, we're rich in farmland. We have good weather, no natural disasters, nice beaches. Ghana is not overcrowded, just 30 million people. We don't have religious conflict. We have political freedom. We have one of the, they said the Ghana's uh, press is even freer than the United States. We have many educated, innovative people who've influenced not just Ghana, not just Africa, but the entire world. We have a lot of nice food. Many people live in Ghana, they don't have to pay, they're not, we, they don't have credit card debt. We, they pay for things in cash. Interesting culture and young, vibrant population. They say the average Ghanaian is just 22 years old. Um, to recap, largest producer of gold, and going back on natural resources, largest producer of gold, second largest producer of bauxite, that's the stuff you use to make aluminum. Cocoa, the second largest producer of cocoa in the world. After, does anybody know the biggest one? You can type it in the chat. We make almost 30% of the cocoa. We should be getting $30 billion a year from it, but those are stories for other days. We only make only 3 billion from it. Manganese and diamonds and palm oil, shea butter, timber, and rosewood. Ghana is very rich. And then um, we were even making our own cars like Kantanka. So Ghana has a lot to be proud of as a country. And I think it's very good if we can build upon our strengths. And um, to end this off, I'm gonna um, quote the version, the, the verse in, Corinthians. It says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there shall be no divisions among you, but you be united in the same mind, the same uh, judgment. Um, so that was a verse I mentioned before. Very important verse. To develop these things, you need to have unity. And also, you need to have wisdom. They say in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12, for wisdom is protection just as money is a protection. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves the life of its owner. If we don't, if we have all these blessings, but we don't want to learn how to develop these things, 
then a lot of these blessings that God has given us will be useless. So another thing is confidence. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a, of a sound mind. Um, I don't know who, if you all know this lady. Um, she, her, her, <clears throat> I don't know if you all know this lady, but she's a very, very famous presenter in Ghanaian TV. You know, for a long time, she was at, at a very low point in her life. But she's decided, you know what? I don't care what people say about me. I'm going to go out and be one of the best presenters in TV ever. And with that, um, she's able to become one of the most famous presenters in Ghana. Her name is Delay. I don't know if you know her show. But, you know, the thing is, you know, we're, we are all in America. And sometimes we think, you know, just because we're in America, we can't really uh, uh, influence what's going on in Ghana. But like I said before, it doesn't really matter about even being in Ghana. Sometimes some of us will never ever really ever get to live in Ghana. But wherever we are, whether or not we're in America or whether we're in Ghana, we need to go and um, do our best to establish ourselves and make the best of our situation. Like, like yesterday, Uncle was mentioning in the talk that Jamaica means we're stuck in tree. You know, sometimes we're stuck. So sometimes we need to make the best of wherever we are. You got nice food. Many non ghanaians like jollof and wache and um, rice and stew. So it's important that, um, you know, we use whatever we can to build off of what we have. I'm sorry, that we use whatever we can and we do whatever we can to build our society. That's what God demands us. God demands of us. And, you know, also because life is very short. Thank you for this time. It's nice having you all here. And thank you for this opportunity. And I will just end off there. Thank you. Thank you, Gabor. Uh, thank you very much. And at this time, sir, will be your questions be found your side. If you have any questions uh, about what Gabor said, uh, you can ask at this time. No questions? All right. If there are no questions, uh, I, I, I hope you are all paying attention. I'm going to be asking some questions later. But Gabra, thank you very, very much for the presentation and shedding light on our country. Uh, a lot of people are not familiar with the wealth and knowledge we have. Uh, and so when they experience it, it's a shock to them. But for those of us that had the opportunity to grow up in Ghana, we know we have tons of opportunities, a lot of wealth that God has given us. Uh, I tell people all the time that for instance, uh, I don't remember of any earthquakes there. Uh, there are some minor tremors there, but no na major natural disasters out there. Uh, and God has given us all this wealth. So what else do we need? But thank you very much. On Sunday, I will call the next segment of the Ebeno, Ebetie poems, Yes, sisters, and I in your Irama, any Mary, Edemai, Efa. Cultural heritage, you know, we are now a dear Groki to be and Sana, a next speaker, no, Abba, Abba, because. We did the Amakoka, we did the Fia Fumwa, Ya knew some I ever came, Ya soon it is said, me my Ghana. And Pat, we are a big green piece. Trade young Pombasia, the Bosier. Waiting at or rad on Diego de Azambuja. Nene Domish and Anna Palm Nansa were a dinner of a one. So we did say, Seek up one. But the Queen Sidi Fatana, Epata Aquano, or why, dear Shadani, no, Sano. Oh, be my Ghana. A profit be none pretty quiet. Miss of all kinds, or both teams of Bedjua Bosso, or your own Edra Brony, Mao de Musashe Crata, as they were at eighteen forty four. A Korea train, no Tom Masenqua. Next to the Onyamia Shano, no money dia, a man in tea. Yas and Tonya Fufro be sorry, Kuma, who be mine. Oh, be mine, Ghana.
a bibram cania, and so my old shine and a panny and a joke, and can eat greasy a brofo raw cow after a boot. JB Dampa, Farming Chroma, John Mesa Saba, Nini Pat could go through for share a combat takery. To say a strong saint at a ma, I could see Ronnie didn't hook him up. Oh, me my Ghana. And a three and two may so. Your barrier who upon a talk of pay so, or a penguma so, or penguma so, and yen dainty, nanny yer moonty, yen yen shaham, and no say, if it's our cockle one year or six home or so, say a boa or two, your mouth are more, nay, our dapper, me my gun. A dying yan massy, a manassy, or a ring sermon with the buy. Uh, send me a kind or like I said before, those of you that are, that are on YouTube and Facebook, uh, this time you're probably going to miss out what we are going to do. Uh, but yeah, what Zoom also dear, a baby dear go back. And so I'm sure I say, my name is Mokaya, a brother, I'm a school car crowd or Ghana. No, I'm a school car near the end of the show. I see if you are Mr. Alex, okay, dear, go primary school or Ghana. Some people used to call mental. Mental, that's it. Mental yeah. dictation. Into yes. yes. your bare mental, your yes. dictation part, your bare mental. Into the bare name, you know, you have a line, so we are all Ghanaians, one way or the other. We talk about Ghana, the good things about Ghana, we're from Ghana. So, you have a bare, you have a good craving. You have a kind. The person in Busa said, Who is a Ghanaian? Obi beti ni ama esemu ena na mshau o kasa ba kwa nua bobi pufu so eti ni akasa. So obi beti ni abo odia na ma recognize o nua eti ni akanti. E a o zoom eso. Who is a Ghanaian? Ni Ghana. Oh, Adina. Adina, who is a Ghanaian? Yeah, I'm sorry. Who is a Ghanaian? Me. You? Good. <laughs> Adina is a Ghanaian. Good. What makes you a Ghanaian? Auntie Julie. Then the chance is here. I'm a bad name. I'm a semi Ghana for. Then the chance is who is a Ghanaian? What qualifies you as a Ghanaian? Auntie Julia Santua. Um. Mama mani nye ding. Okay. I'll say we are known as uh, uh, peace people and peace and um, hospitality. That is true. But I know you trust me a Ghana ni. Into maybe say Dr. Ebu Awoswa. Who is a Ghanaian? How do you define a Ghanaian? Hello. Yes, I'm Joanna. A Ghanaian. A Ghanaian is. I see Georgina about first. Answer that, Joanna. Thank you. according to the Ghana law, no. O parents baku ye Ghana niya. O ye Ghana ni. Another condition, another one, so my name is Muni Manoa. What also makes you a Ghanaian? My name is Muni Manoa, Muni Manoa. Say, I'm a Ghana. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know the automatic. Yeah, I'm a Ghana. Answer that account. Yeah. Anyone who opposes, oh, Christian, who are you? you know? Speaking a Ghanaian language does not qualify you to be a Ghanaian. What makes you a Ghanaian? Just like an American, you have to be born to American parents. You know? For a Ghanaian, you have to be born in Ghana or born to a parent of Ghana. There's a third condition. Be married to a Ghanaian. If you are married to a Ghanaian, you have to be married to a Ghanaian. If you are married to a Ghanaian, so count, apart from that, you, the, your children could be Ghanaians because one of the parents is a Ghanaian. See, that qualifies you. Last chance. Adoption. And also count. Thank you, but yeah, no, 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 no. Last chance. Naturalization. Naturalization. And also, come, but yeah, no, 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 no
Grandparents. Wanakaya, una na, thank you. In Ghana, so una na ya Ghana niya, o ya Ghana ni. Even if your parents are not. But it's interesting, how could you not be a Ghanaian if your, your grandparents is here and then your parents are not? It's not even possible. It's according to constitution, you know, it's either one of the parents and now say, oh, nana, a Ghanaian, and it qualifies you to be Ghana. So unlike US now, and other places now, actually US, Yewohano, Ghana, Nibia, Nipapa, Nana, Nima, Mia, Ghana, say, oh, no, Alaska, and I will know Moon, Sua, or a Ghana. It's as simple as possible. Okay, and also I know Sadia, I know pay Mr. Alex and uh, Gabra Kabi Biafa near my old Ghana. So I'm going to ask one of the kids can someone name one of the colors in the Ghana flag? And what Red. it stands for? Yellow. Stands okay, for yellow. The Who said yellow? Yellow. <laughs> 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 Red oh, stands for the blood. Into the area. I see yellow. Red. What, Red. what is the yellow for Adina? Gold. 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 Thank you. The wealth of the country, right? That is Red. what it is. Any other colors? I, I... Red stands for uh Forest. the blood of our ancestors. Good. Red. Uh, Alan, for the blood of our ancestors. Okay. Another one. In green. Green. Who's that green? Me. Kwame, what does green stand for? Green stands for the lush vegetation and fruits and plants that we have. Thank you. And then what else, Avisha? Yellow. Black. Okay, you already said yellow. Yeah, okay, good. There's another color that's missing. White. We already said red. We said yellow and we black. said green. Black star. Black. Who, who said a black star? Nadine. Good job, Nadine Blackstar. Do you know what it stands for? <laughs> Uncle talked about it this morning. I don't know if you guys were on. In your phone, me up. What does the Black Star stand for? Hope. Thank you, <laughs> Grandpa. Thanks for helping out. Hope of Africa, right? The unity of Africa. That star. Uncle said this morning that you are all stars. So the star stands for unity or the load star of Africa, where they want everybody to make sure that if we are free, then Africa also needs to be free and you can excel in everything you do. So that is it. All right, in Peyin Fono, you maybe we said movie question. We've talked about senior way Ghana by birth, parents. Into the other question I maybe we send here. Who are there now who say oh Ghana? Pabuchoni Manuel Bodin and Sana Wakasa. Then the man who said, oh, Ghana. Oh, Ghana. And you're Ghana for the whole line, so. Uh, so you're Ghana, you're now. Who's it? What's that? OK, moon picture away. Say, see, I'm going to be able to chew with you. Now, who may be able to? Now, I'm going to be able to see you. Now, I'm going to be able to see Ghana. Now, I'm going to be able to see you. And I'm going to be able to see you. Then I'll be who I chess all gun. Dust. Dust. Then put row in the Ghana. Oh, the dust in Ghana. <laughs> That's a foot review. Huh? The no, language. The smell <laughs> and the noise. The language. What type of noise? Um, Pepe. Pepe. Cars <laughs> <laughs> blowing their horns. They are very common in Ghana. I say India. I don't see one of them. Good job. Traffic. Then you have one guy. I don't come up on. I don't come up on. I have a no pop. I no pop. I no pop. You always hear the rooster crow <laughs> in the morning. It's very very common. What else? I have one more. Poppy 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 poppy. Yeah, the... people selling ice cream. Uh, you know. I cook up on. I cook up on. I cook up on. I can't know. I'm too judging. I can't know. And sorry, and sorry, I'm on my dead day. Yes, Auntie Julia car. A lot of churches in Ghana, family churches, they start worship at 7 a.m. and they are megaphones all day. And sorry, they pray for Ghana. Oh, be sorry, I know what you are sorry. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Okay. All Come night. There, all night. Not 5 a.m. All night. All and, uh, night. Okay. And all I want to say, and I want to say, I uh, uh, blow a uh, how music. Aha. Obi told you, bro. Near my son, no. I'll call around. No. Or, 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 or
Okay, and okay. okay. also so oh. Now Obi Xiao wa Obi Xiao. Obi Obi Xiao Obi Xiao. Ai. Okay. Obi Xiao no asmale no ko. Ghana de ya ya tia. Eh na coblet. Coblet. Shoe repairs no. Omo bo ha da. Shoe makers. Very shoe makers. Omo omo equipment. The chrome are you be all good. Mo ya de. Then be you. You shine. You shine. Okay. What can you do? And don't don't mosquitoes. Oh, we cry when you be off. Mosquito, there sound man or yeah, who's a mosquito? Traffic. And don't tell me once now. Yeah. Oh, bro, I will bro. That heat. Yeah, okay, but that was a bro, Ghana. Okay, mo ya di pa ya me to aso. Oh, man, they say I will fufu tim tim tim. Hey, what's it you? Yes, pounding of fufu everywhere. Who here saw Ben Chomba? Who be who no? They say I will fufu machine. Oh, yeah, every more. Okay, see, I've only got a machine, but your body, I'm not you see a regular a man labor, no, and I'm not you see. Okay, then you my mama hint. What about cars? Oh, chotra. Aha, and it's like a nation, sack of nation, and I mean, but I'm not sure. Can they, can they, we boy, come on, see, yeah, 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 Medics need now. I'm more a drobi now. Then be on. Si si ya di endro. Coco. Ice water. Ice water. Ice water. Ice water. Ice change. I have medics need thing. Any insisa. Yeah. Now we say some kind of. Aha. Any insisa. We want to correct change. They say you have to use mobile money. Mumu. That's right. You have to use. We must have book card. Who know yati here? Who know? They say I couple. They say I couple. Who know card? Who know? Who know? Mate, mate, I met you all the Okay, all right, let's come to the kids. Kids, what do you know about Ghana? What can you tell me about Ghana? Yes, Emmanuel, what can you tell me about Ghana? They grow a lot of stuff there. Like what? Give me an example. Coco. Good, thank you. What other crops do they grow? Kwame? Yeah. Yeah, good, Alan. What other crops? Kelsey, Lexi, Ethan. Everybody needs to speak. We want to know if you are Ghanaians today. Yes, Adina. Lante. In Pachomama, I'm going to have a father, sir. What crops, Ethan? Yes, you, Kwame. Kwame Eaton. Yeah, Kwame Eaton. Yellow eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, the languages? We're talking about crops, Kwame. You don't pay attention. Lettuce. Oh, okay. corn. Beans? Beans, good. Thank you. Lettuce. Thank you. Coffee? All right, we'll get back to the Ginger adults. Ginger your phone. No. Cocoa? Ginger Good. Root. Somebody already said that. Thank you. Auntie Mary, it's Yama. Pacho Kumasi, a day, dinner, different Kumasi wall. Kumasi, I would do for you all. Pacho, I tell you, you would do my say no. Auntie Mary, Garden City. So, my boy, no, that idea. Auntie Mary is Yama. Miss Yaw, Yanara assassin. Why not trust her? The question will impress Auntie Mary, pen the answer. Mary is Yama. Until Mary was also. I'm a fan lawyer. Uh, the lawyer no. Uh, so you see, Auntie Mary, the 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 you know, the Zoom no. Auntie Mary. Okay. The lawyer no bet me up one. I I could go for the Ephraim. 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 Ephra
Oh, there be no dia you know what say no. And then yes, our friend was say crum. Say crum, yeah. Where can you bring me there? The pet there. Or more, more West Africa thing in Kano. Near Garden City. Obi in America. America for the Kumasi for the penny. You know. Yes, also. Ah, okay. You be call. Queen Elizabeth in the mall. Queen Elizabeth in the mall. Okay, the dance. Yeah, to also. Um. Are you coffee? Coffee. The entire your friend is sit Garden City. Now Kumasi a fair pa. Now there was a lot of flowers. I wore a ye Kajetia ho, Elko Zoo Hornum, say so much returning in a year through. It was a very beautiful place. Okay, and now, now, you know, then you are Kumasi Pebri. They say, and what you're telling you, and my garden sit near. Okay, yeah, the dumb was saying, and pay you for no so Yeah, the kids on it. Ghana, yeah, Kumasi used to be very, very pretty. It's still pretty though. If you go there right now, it's very pretty. So if you haven't had a chance, it's time for you to go. Okay, forcing our guest in Anna B. Say more question, but come on. Um, they near the pledge of Ghana. Who is not a pledge? Our guest no, in Anna forcing. Until Vic, who there? Who your lawyer? Until who there? What can I do? So we for Frankasa. Until Vivian, pledge of Ghana. <laughs> yeah. Until I'm a catch up. Mumfa, Mofra, no call Ghana. Any say a year B C answer. Mum call no mum call here. Say Ghana. Oh, we met me a one. We met me a one. Pledge of Ghana. I promise on my honor to be faithful and loyal to Ghana, my Baba, mother. Mama, Alan, come on, Alan, come. Okay. Alan, go ahead. I promise on my honor to be faithful and loyal to Ghana, my mother. I pledge myself to the to the service of Ghana with all my strength and with all my art. I promise to hold in high esteem our heritage, one for us through the blood and color of our fathers, and I pledge. Myself and all things I upload and defend in good name of Ghana. So help me, God. Good Amen. job. Good job. Why are there? Good job. That's the pledge of God. What name do you pledge? No. Do you know who wrote the pledge of God? All right. So, what name do you homework? What name you do you the pledge of God? All right. Open yes, yeah, man. Tomorrow, or more question, man. The news are available. Yes, that's why. Oh, Nikki. Okay. And I miss her. Um, Auntie Vivian. Eh, Auntie Vivian, brave for me. Okay. Miss Shamo, Ghana. Saying, and now, you stop it, Trotro. We'll be waiting at the street. And our taxi. Taxi. Oh, 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 Hey, hey, Oh, I know you have four more dear. I think you have a Oh, I said, Oh, be try. Yes, yes, it would be a year for wood, dear. But God, a baby, a dear. Oh, I said, Oh, 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 o
Wana kae, wana ya buwa. Ampa. Buwa. Okay, now we are saying. Especially guys, you know. Oh, who has a... Aha. Yo, ni ukwa mecha ni ni. Na, musio kana ebia, ni pakwa ni epe ni muna wako ka he. Ene ni ya umumbe chyo. Inti ya nusu kao. Okay. Adia bako suwa, mi ni etawo gana pa... Buses, mumu ka edro diye. Adia bako susu umu. Amu taya o long distance buses. Ni sabu ni ba dekwa. Ya, Mr. Ya, Mr. Ampa. Ofro ka na kwa ni waka kwa. Na wayside asofu wano. And I say, I'm more cast and a debby. I am no more the same, no so a be true. And yet, hey, Yami, I'm super with you. Any sound, man. Okay, that's it. Then be on the mouth, Kai Gana, Ka Omar. Oh, yeah, eh, I so Sammy, I have a time, be time. Hey, I don't care. I come back from. I feel we move the plane. Traffic. I'm only a scientist. I don't care. Yes, yes. Boss is so quiet. Oh yeah. Ah, traffic. Oh, traffic. Oh, we must. Oh, we must. Yeah, come on. All right. I did my course. The person I can say, hey, Muka, send a name. Can you send me Ghana? Muka, Muka, call me. Mukai, send a can on Opa. Don Brockers. Don Brockers. Don Brockers. I'm here by the way. Don Brockers. I don't want Kai. I'm here by the way. Kai. Don Brockers. My uncle King's him, no, the big no more catcher. Open in the eye and say. Yeah, 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 sorry, dear. Yeah, yeah, for that, I'm sorry, down, huh? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Me, I'm sorry, early morning. Nah, are you and you to four groups? At the kind of human area, baby, I have a penny for a cost of a nine year cock canoe. Oh, the human baby, a baby, twenty, almost twat. You drew one spot, and not almost two years, no more cock. Now I walk as I no work at home. Until now I start to as I wish now we be done here. I know the man here is here. I know some more here researcher. I know but two 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 and if I cry, I know. Now you cooking your mister matcher. Say. Now what what here? Here we are. Can be all back. Until we be in the area. We are saying at the new tour. I say back back to I sorry down home. Now you be my report. Now fee. Yeah, 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 Pong. Okay, that's it. So, after Pepe, but I'm not going to say that. Open your case, but you're going to say that. The other aspect, I'm not going to say that. Oh, I'm going to say that. Can you know? 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 Kakrabi awak cibi ama fam sa. Yeah, muda dah se 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 dia awak awak graduate dia muka eh impai bo eh park so ni sa ni mana mana. Nah, aku ye di di sa. Okay, alright. Then ni mana ya muhu agana. Bukan cakap saya tu saya kata ni ama aku we brew agana. Memang idea baku. Se se, uhu se kios baby ya pentu red yellow green. Aku tahu lotu. And as I say, I draw a car and maybe you'll be a cheap bicycle or town for nice. Then you now call the whole of Ghana. Then you never know the whole. Who a lot of signs that Gina may make those Italian man. Thank you, Linda. Bushet, Trotro, especially Bushet, as near you know. Your Trotro, near my be brave or wife saints or cars, no, and it's a you know. Thank you. All right. They say, I never come up again and say, Boboya. Bobo ya we be as I can't take it. Bobo ya China for. Bobo ya ne. Pradia. Pradia. 
Bahama Kambu. Now, no, I want to join my own A lot of hawkers. Brakofi. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. bottom. Atutu bottom. I was so. Boja, 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 boja. Yeah, I have forgotten your positives. Open air market, open air, and a house so now who said, Gana for Subambia and Suba out. Gana for pet, Casa, ye Casa, ye, 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 to Oqua, who do I was a gun and be in a case because. Chroma crap, oh yeah, we must be casasa. I na oh yeah, macho. Eh, eh, treater, treater. Eh, eh, inshallah, eh, chapo. I wish I had. So yes, we are sure. So so. Yeah. Anyway, then we have na Ghana for your tire. Me me, I want Yankasa Seni Express here. Oh, be casa. Oh, who Ghana ni oh who? Say, ana then yeah yeah, my wish is Ghana for. We can okay. be dramatic, okay. pa, okay. and show of a uh, strong affection. Ushia will be will be a chenda wunu na na se. Eh, ushia no kwa na ushia ya 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 luku favorable. Will be a especially with the olden days. Nipa are happy to. We wunu will be a. If you kwa na wunu no, so we we easily. Um, in fact, the same. You are born do easily. Like we can, I think I can be at me show so much excitement, affection, and very helpful. Okay. okay. Ghana, Thank so we say a big question. Another question. Yeah, no. Yes, the Darcy. I know. Yeah, the culture shock coming out of Roma. Ghana for a time. Question. And Africa for yet had a question, a question or not. Oh, quite. I didn't know person. What is saying? I didn't know, Busa. It's always like that. And also, by always who said the paragraphy, Ghana, because who was on the year, no, no, so the question, eh, you are not. Okay, that's a damn you. Yeah, bo be adding we are Ghana. Ghana or Befra were the sister, Becahu and our bra, Becahu and our mammy and our papa. Respect, respect. Yeah, boy, yeah. I just say, Ebia, when you say no, and I wish I about Penny Moa now, Obia, or yeah, idea, or the title become a part of Obi, Obi, quah, or some may bow, or consort some may, but I'll come back. I never was so angry, and I say, if I need you now, what quah, or say, Waba. Okay, I draw them you and I'm a Miss Omos as well. Now make us a who can't pay you who are overcast me patchel. Okay, we part chop. Yes, we part. Are you over? Can be be a a be a be offensive or can say a um sebe. You better to sebe, right? You just there are ways to talk to grown ups. You don't just get up and tell them what's on your mind. There are ways you have to go about it doing that. Okay, all right. Now they never be a a year the church say a year Ghana ni. So yeah, my examples to say, okas na so a be a. Then gestures, they beat me. I want to see where you began. A be a be swing, a be at him, did it? Yep, Papa. No, Papa, I said, Who rap ye be a more? You have to greet. Okay, then yeah. go into the house. Whoever, what over over coffers, no, wouldn't answer Ubusa and Gaza, which year. Which no, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to work beside the parkour out of there now. Yeah, okay, all right. Then be on. And I tell you, who 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 who
Ena, oko tu ni paswa. Uchi ano? Is respect, irrespective of where the person is. Then yet you cry na ya bonti ya. Oko tu no awa abe tu no awo ne. Uchi ansa, ansa no asa ne dingo mo. Yeso fiti ana okasa. Okay. Ena kana so ye insult to say peninfo okasa na koda u interrupt. Okay. Kana so ye mfa bonku munti ya. Munti ya. Okay. Kacho, <laughs> 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 And I'm mostly O can say be a go and I say coco. Answer the sun away room. That's it. Say, and yet be say, a chess and say, so also be obi banner be a second in the tissue and a summer, a summer, a summer, a summer, a Uncle Coffee, Miss Soyan brought for wine and Colano and Tidia Kianasiana. Why? Okay, no name is Colano Monti, you can't monti mink. Eh, been a monte. Okay, and a monsia. This means uh, beg, begging or pleading. Usually, when you are pleading in Ghanaian, uh, I can't do it very well because you, you have to do it when you are up and you know, uh, yeah, lower. It's not like this. And then the other one is if you see someone coming to you this way. There's a, a likelihood that something bad has happened to them. Maybe they lost somebody. So you don't see people walking in Ghana, you know, just walking like this. It, it's not seen. So when you see that, it has a meaning. Okay? When you do that. Okay, thank you. Another thing is to say, Ghana for A, you see a lot of hand gestures. Ye kasa, ye di ensa e kasa. Ye tadi ensa Africa for, and a Ghana for, ye tadi enti se, only a bro for a age money or out to or move a cash roll. I don't know those arcasa, cast some nature, but a nature, son, a Yamaya, no, and no, be. All right, back to the kids. We're talking about some of the crops. Now, I want to call out some of the insects or animals in Ghana. The grown ups can also mention it. In Tia Mokan, Mr. Mokan or a bro for a friend So, what are some insects that could be found in Ghana? Yes, Kwame? It's a very Mos common one. Mosquitoes. Yeah, that, that's very infamous. The mosquito is very common in Ghana. Which other one? Once in a... Horse fly. Grass Thank hopper. you. Where is it, Alan? Grasshopper. Grasshopper, yeah, locust. Yes, what else? Roosters. Uh, we talk about insects, but we, we take roosters. <laughs> What about the, the one that causes uh, sleeping sickness? Setsa fly. Setsa fly. You gotta, they call it cheche fly, but it's actually setsa fly. That's also very common in, uh, in some parts of Ghana, right? Okay. What about uh, other animals that are common to Ghana that you can't find in other places or it's not common in the United States? In Pajin Fona, in Mwabe, in Ghana, maybe who are you, sir? Grass cutter. A grantier. A grantier do I I the geckos. The geckos are always around. African bush elephant. Yeah, you are. The one with the red head. Maybe. The one with the red head. The one with the red head. Oh, you are. 
No, no, a camel lizard. In African bush uh, elephant. The what? Elephants? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, bush in Ghana. Bush elephant, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the, what is it called? Uh, bush pygmy? Is that what you meant? Five. Do you know what a bush pygmy is? Are you from I Bush baby, sorry, bush baby. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> bush, bush ah, baby. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. 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 I don't Oria, Oria, Oria. I don't know, Nancy. A form of a gun, a black or white. A no money for you, no, 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 Oh, okay, only I'm going to have more research. I don't know. Okay, that's it. All right, you have a card, you have a What's it? Monkey, swear. Monkey, do I? Oh, I didn't say a boo or zoo, but my name is a boo or chroma, dear. But who zoo? Okay, yeah, 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 what is the most uh what are some of the sports played in Ghana? Maybe the kids can help us. Soccer. Okay. Thank you. Soccer. What else? What are those sports in Ghana? Are you cricket? Cricket. 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 Good. Are you field oh, hockey? Hockey, good. Field hockey. Not but netball. Boxing. Netball. Netball, good. yeah. Chill. <laughs> Basketball. Basketball. Volleyball. Netball. I'm a frassy. I'm on here. Golf. Golf. Thank you. Go. What else, Rachel? Hockey. Volleyball. Uh, Runners. Yes. Good. What Press. else? Table tennis. Runners. Baseball. Uh, baseball. Yes. What else? Track racing. The same Sack race. Oh, I'm talking about national sports. Yeah, not, not table uh, tennis. Uh, table tennis. Ping pong is the same as ping pong. What else? What about this one? Baseball. Wait, boxing. Oh, boxing. Yes, boxing said is that. one of them. Okay, all right. And then, so then and then, then last questions, and then we'll turn over to what? Yeah, I was saying, I started with swimming. Athletics. Swimming. Thank you. Open you. Right. Swim, swimming. So athletics is very common uh, out there. All right. Track? Thank you. I'll fill the track. Field track, 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 field. track. Hello. The <laughs> battle yes. horse racing. Yeah, Jai. And I'm that's yeah. And that's all. Ghana, Ghana Muntai. Muntai. <laughs> yeah, Ghana Muntai. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Horse racing. Okay. Finally, the <laughs> name <laughs> the most popular sports in Ghana. Of course, why? I do our crown perform mass. Sorry. And until you have a question, Mr. Onima, I'm going to come back when I'm going to come back to the top. So, what are some of the nicknames for the Ghana national teams? Can someone give me one? And when you say it, don't say anything else. Black Stars. Thank you. Black Stars is the senior national, senior men's national soccer team. What else? Fabulous. Oh. <laughs> National team, no fabulous. Black queens. Black queens, thank you. Uh, Black, you are where you... Black queens. Black queens. Black queens. Black correct. Uh, yeah, under 20, 21 men's uh, soccer team. Okay. Phobia. Black queens. Auntie Georgina, phobia for motor, you saying? Hmm. Go. 
Phobia for Abu Dhabi Gaza day. Never say die. Never say die. Never say die. Never say die until what? Until the bones are rotten. Okay, we that's it. Any other words? Abushi and wives. Abushi and wives. Only daddy. Only daddy. Olympics. Mama Akasa. End. Me pass every wait all down. Me panel. Then you. Apostles of power soccer. Hey, <laughs> yeah, but you never see that. EA United. Apostles of power soccer. But the United. <laughs> brother have United. So what else? Ah, but they are so far. Kim Faisal, Kim Faisal. That is Kim Faisal. Like the Bruiser. Kim Faisal, Kim Faisal. Like the Bruiser. I was so hot. Black meteors. Black meteors, anti why are there under 23 a black meteors? Then you a man or I got two other names. Right, I'm all united. RTU, why are there? There are a lot of soccer fans here. <coughs> hey, I haven't heard a second deal, I mean wise. Obasi, Obasi Goldfields. Goldfields. I shall go goldfields. Yeah, Obasi Goldfields. Hazakes. Second Hazakes, I'm part. But of any say, say, Tim say, a Cassiana Tanea can has that near me now. Only move you say, say, only move you are Calagon cities. Any Medina Mediamba, any Naba. Okay, Yanka last one, national one, or national nicknames. And so, what are you can see? I must say, Tim, you know, and to be a higher body, you cry, who may be free. Oh, okay. National team, national team. Yaka team, 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 team. satellites, yaka meteors, yaka black stars. I can't remember no barco. Starlet. Starlet. Kit one. I'm part. I'm a winning national. A man, yaka black queens. I can't mean you. Black queens. Hey, a man who move follow a man in the black maidens. Black maidens, it does say. Black maidens, the under 17. Now, last one. Under 20, no. Mamun Gugulo. Black princesses, with their mamu. Timuni Ma. It's a senior. It's because it's a senior. Black stars, maybe I will be a wherever we are, we can shine. We can shine and we shine whatever we do. And as Christians, being here in the United States does not mean that we are not Ghanaians. A Ghanaian, you can spot a Ghanaian anywhere in the world when you see one. Most of the time, they are gentle. Uh, they speak softly, even though compared to other tribes and uh, you know ethnicities, we sound uh, what you call louder, but we're still gentler. And, and like our uncle said, we're also hardworking out there. So these are some of the qualities that we need to keep pushing forward. And then we also have to learn about what we have in our country, what we can do out there. So um, I, I have some other questions, but I will just turn it over to our speaker for this hour and see if he, uh, if, so that he has enough time to tell us what he has for us. And then after that, we'll continue with some of the questions I have and then we'll end our program. In Tisabri said, well, for Alex, we are available. And yes, I also dear, a bit to us. Okay. Before Beba, no, I think, say, uh, <laughs> assignments be a pledge, you know, Obi Diaba, but there's a controversy of pledge, you know, Timunia more research. I'll see a Michael Bardo. Bordo, I'm not sure second one. Aha, I'm saying Michael Bordo. Because Bordo, yeah, yeah, time, you know. Yeah, we're in here too. Yeah, but it's even both of them, you know. And I'm saying. Yes, if, yes, if Philip Behosu saw influence also. And so far, no, a resolve it. No, the NMC. What'd you say? The NMC. What's the price of the original, The original one was by Philip Beho. And then mm -hmm. the recent one was uh, a, a pledge on my honor was written by uh, Michael uh, Bozo. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, me watch out more come you see. Because first one and now you shut up and start chewing. Baby, they say they work in society. What's that you? Mama, more come you see and them no need play. The same person in trouble. I just the same. The same person in trouble. Debio, or more cut the first one. No, no more to be. Be the second one. No more to be. Be play the game. I come back. Yeah, controversy one. No, we almost say and them no. And them no. What fee? Nyan tem ni eka ho egg. And them na your first one and na your words your different. And I make us say me as we to wear my my different words. That's the only different. Na read them ni be be here the same. But you are saying but that I know na me say controversy wo ho no because from the transition from the first one to second one no. It be say still not feeling the whole influence wo ho. And second one they also say eh Michael Bozo. It is the same no. And your result, maybe Alex beat me on my answer. Thank you. Make a pledge, yo. Move a anthem. What's a pledge? Oh, yeah, anthem. Yeah, can't pledge. Anthem. No, a pledge. The same person in trouble. Move, move, move. research here. The same person in trouble. Alex, but you beat me up by Oha. I, I just, I just came on. Oh, sorry. Okay. I got lost. Let me, let me, let me switch it. Uh, the Benami one location, Devices. okay, okay. Uh, uh later, near Yakan was him, but before you talk, we're talking about how <laughs> the pledge and the anthem there's a controversy right now. We cannot tell who the authors are. Uh, oh, yes, research, research uh, some areas say it was Philip Berho contributed, others say it was uh, Michael Kwame Bojo. Uh, so it's, I don't, I don't have the answers. So I don't maybe, have the facts. I don't have the facts. Exactly. I so, don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So we have to do more research. But yes. we would like to turn this uh, portion over to you so I have more time. And then after that, we'll also continue with some of our uh, questions we have and then we'll end it. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, it must be evening at your end at this time. If you, so if you can see now, my background has changed because I switched yeah. location. <laughs> That's why I'm, I was a little bit late. I am a little bit late. So you have to pardon me for that. Um, uh, so once again, I want to thank you for the privilege of being here and to share a few thoughts with you this afternoon. Um, and Commander Mene also for the uh, prior to uh, this event, you know, for the afternoon program, it was, it was a little... I can't say um, there was. He gave me some leeway uh, in terms of what exactly we should be discussing, and he, <clears throat> I decided to look at something again, very simple, nothing complicated. <laughs> I'll try to do things very, very simple, but it's about um, culture, and uh, I think, with your permission, Mr. Moderator, can I share my screen? Can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay, I think I can do that. Okay, it's in my uh, inbox. Uh, you all have to close your eyes. You didn't see anything. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, I have titled this afternoon segment "Cultures and World Views." Cultures and World Views. Um, this afternoon, I will just be speaking to you about, uh, again, just four things. The first thing I'll talk to you about is um, what culture means. So we are celebrating our independence day as a country. We are reflecting on aspects of our heritage. And that includes culture, the way we live, the kind of food choices we make, how we uh, perceive life, adult, young relations, there are all kinds of things in there. Um, but culture, even though say the word culture in terms of the meaning is a very simple thing, in Sun Sanswono is extremely huge. See, the way we live, the impact in your, uh, your life you know, is so huge. So I'll look at just some of the impacts of culture, just a few, a few things. And then I would also talk about the fact that, say, many of us, and then uh, uh, admin, admin, um, um, if 
we define a, a Ghanaian as somebody a your own organa or no mamma and papaya gana for or no na or something like that. See, but currently, no, uh, we live in the US. And uh, because we live in the US, there is an interaction between the Ghanaian culture, the way we live, how we look at life, the food we eat, the way we dress, how we raise our children. There is an interaction between all of those elements in our culture and that of the American culture. Okay, so I call that cultural interaction. That's our interaction we see what happens. So we'll look at that. And then I would make the point say, in this current world, yes, we are Ghanaians and we are very proud of our culture. Uh, we are very proud of our heritage. We think about where we've come from and who we are. Yes, we are very proud about that. But the world has become something like, uh, they call it a global village. And you see a diversity of people, Asian, Africans, the typical Americans. You may see Brits if you have something like that. Uh, there is there is a multiplicity of worldviews. experience level life So yes, we are part of our culture, but Ghanaian culture and any other cultures interact. How do we navigate? How do we get around all these kinds of cultures mm -hmm. and maintain our distinctive um, identity, uh, whether as, as Ghanaians or as Christians? Um, let me mention that this area is not my specialty. So I'm not an authority in cultural studies. Yes, I did, you know, just for fun, just <laughs> read around. Um, what I really study is public policy. Uh, but this one is something I just do. So uh, don't, if I have to, if I need you to quote somebody, I would give you the reference. So you, you don't really don't want to quote me on anything, anything here. Um, I must also say that it is not an exhaustive discussion. There is so much we can learn in thinking and talking about culture. There's so much out there. See, the Amelian is really scratching the surface. Really doesn't go so much deep. Um, the whole idea is that it will inspire all of us so that we can learn more, read more, understand more, and hopefully be able to um, improve on whatever lessons that we are able to learn. So let's start with a common, very common, very uh, basic definition of culture. So culture is defined as a way a group of people live. Very, very simple. Uh, nothing so complicated. But this definition, the consequences are enormous. It's so huge. If you say culture, I've been in the US for a while. I still struggle. I'm not sure. I mean, to me, uh, I adjust to American diet. I still want to do my, my wachi and my mutu and my, <laughs> all those kinds of things. Um, that tells you the influence of culture. Um, dress and clothing, even ideas, see, ideas and the way we see the world, it is also influenced by culture. And see, we hear the meaning of culture now, very, very simple in terms of definition. But your life you know, is so huge. It is said, say, culture, no, a war, and fancy, is it in Krabata? And Krabata, me, no, and you know, you can, um, Use, use as attributes, as a features, if you want. One of them is a culture is dynamic, meaning say, uh, it is not static, it changes. And the, uh, one example of what I'm is say, at some point in Ghana's history, see, we, relegate, we relegated the women to uh, the kitchen. And we, we the men, we, we only use the women, uh, not use, but we only engaged the women um, in farming, okay? Uh, these days, they are changing or they have changed, okay? In Oko Ghana, women go to school a lot, very well educated. I think the same thing can be said of, in the US as, as well. Um, here, I am speculating, but in MLB Amatitete, Christ, I guess, apparently they go to school more than the, <laughs> more than the women. 
and more than the men these days. <clears throat> That's one attribute of culture. Culture changes, culture shifts, culture is not static. The other one is uh, culture is transferable. And the Ophia Ghana, and maybe a can in any hole because of say a month or two to Sukaina and in the air, quite people are reading wide, they understand the environment better. And you know, a lot of things have been introduced uh, to Ghana previously in any hole. So, culture is also transferable, it's not just dynamic, it is also transferable. Now, we go on to say, say, <clears throat> and I'm say, culture. It was so much influence in Tino. And for me, BBI, I will call it world view. See, world view. World view, you know, I have to say, oh, my hero, no, I'm a shay, spectacles here. Uh, only PBI who experiences a wunya, who background that, your war, who soon will be a wunya, no, over time, you know, send your money in like a kaboom, a for me something like a mindset, a world view, be a sa world view, you know, would you be a see. And the way you understand the world as an individual or even as a collective group of people, so kind of the way we understand the world, it is based on our worldview. Africans, we believe, say, we've had a certain experience that many uh, groups of people on this planet have not. And that experience is colonialism. That's our experience, you know, influences significantly the way we see the world, just because of that experience. Okay, and so culture, no, you know, the way we look at life, the way we <clears throat> understand life, and all of that is based on culture, and that culture you know, forms a worldview as a spectacle. To be a, would it take a see You want to use that to make sense of the world. Some people call that worldview differently. Some it be a friend of filter, it be a friend of perspective. Some people call it philosophy, others call it ideology. Um, I don't really mind however you want to call it, but the most important thing is uh, culture uh, uh, influences the way we look at the world by forming in our minds a worldview. Now, maybe an experiment, and that experiment uh, said, uh, I wanted to correct this. Is this glass half empty or half full? Your answer depends on your worldview. And that worldview has consequences. And t assuming that ABM fan said, my aim is to fill this glass to the brim. Mm -hmm. And Nihuni say a half full. Because Nihuni say a half full, I am motivated to push on and make sure that I fill it to the brim. Because my worldview tells me it is only half full. Well, if I see it as half empty, my yeah, you know, we go my half empty into any mempanas. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the worldview scenario you know, we have based on our culture, worldview you know, has significant consequences. It's not just an idea you have. Okay, ideas have consequences. Remember a couple of examples. Do you think that I'm speaking here? I'm speaking to the students in in in, in, in the audience. We are school knee, if you think that you can be the best in your class, one of the arguments I made in the morning, a star can be black and a black star can shine. Kwame Nkrumah used that uh, statement as a mind liberator. See, there, there's something there's something in the mind that you, we, 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 we need to get rid of them. And see, as an individual, if you think that you can be the best in your class, do you think so? It is based on the worldview, how you see yourself. Give another example. Uh, do you think it can make a difference in this world? Do you think you matter? Do you think you can cause significant changes to this planet? Whether or not, you know, if you say yes, you are right. If you say no, you are also right. Again, everything depends on your worldview. Some people are born and they say they really don't know who they are, so they can transgender all kinds of things. Depends on your worldview. And the worldview is so important, so critical, I say. And yeah, dear, what's it? As we talk about, you know, Ghana and Independence Day and uh, where we have come from and heritage, is something I want us to really pay attention to. Some people have argued, say, um, your worldview influences your responses to life's four biggest questions. 
And these are questions about origin. Uh, where did we come from? Uh, uh, meaning, what does life mean? What, did, what is the purpose of life? Morality, how do we distinguish between right and wrong? And um, destiny, what happens to us when we die? Your worldview influences your response to any of these questions. And you think that um, we came from apes and uh, when I die, that is the end of life. I just get into the grave, I rot, and that is the end. That is based on your worldview. Yeah, I know we are fortunate, we are Christians and we are Adventists and we know that God made us in his image. Imago Dei, read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The Bible tells us. Uh, so, in his own image. And that even though when we sin, death does not have the final say. We have that worldview. And so worldview, no, it impacted how we are living our lives. We know, say, we are passing through this planet. We are pilgrims and sojourners. And that even though we will die at some point, if Christ doesn't come before our death, by his grace, if we die in him, we will resurrect again. So my key point here is that worldview matters. Worldview is important because it affects the way we answer these four important questions. Now, the next thing I'm person make can I say, it's our worldview, see, you know, because we live in the globalized world, see, people are traveling, same kind, you know, we are Ghanaians, are, you know, moving all the way from Ghana, we're in the US, we probably won't go back to Ghana again. <laughs> so there is that interaction of worldviews, there is that interaction of cultures, there is that constant engagement uh, between diverse ideas, diverse worldviews. And we are also Christian. In, the question now becomes said, in the midst of all of these, given said, um, worldview is so important. Worldviews are critical and they inform um, how we look at life and that we cannot just approach life with any, any worldview. Because as I said, worldviews are important. Ideas matter. You don't just believe in anything and just grab it and embrace it because they would no influence it your actions and behavior. And t there is cultural pluralism. There is a multiplicity of worldviews. And t day, as Christians, what do we do? If you say, we can't just believe in anything. If you say, in terms of how you live your life and how you see the world and all of that. <clears throat> now, my proposal to you this afternoon is that, um, this is just basically a summary. I think, say, um, that's a problem. And the problem is that there are so many worldviews, as I, I've, I've, I try to illustrate. But for this very, very simple question, is it wrong to steal to help the homeless? And the panel maker said, no, the DFW church should be trying to put something together, go and help the hopeless. Uh, is it wrong to uh, steal to do that? Now, your answer to this question really depends on the worldview. Some people will tell you this is OK. Others will say, it is wrong. Uh, however, you answer, it's a question of your worldview. But I want to suggest to you that the Bible also has a worldview. See, the set of ideas that are embedded in scripture, you know, and for me, a certain mindset for the Christian. And with that mindset, you know, that Christian is supposed to use that to look at the world and to make sense of life. And see, there are so many other worldviews out there. My suggestion to you is that the Bible has a worldview and that we should adopt the Bible's worldview. And see, you know, Ghanaian culture and all of that, yes, is good. Certain elements of our culture do not align with, our, with, with God's word. And no, no, we have to leave them behind because he is Christopher. Yeah? And we have been saved in Christ. The back Christ to Moa. And your man, if you know, Kayano, all the filth. And your man, I am why my young is women quite anymore. Whether they are cultural or not. Also, a senior message on my domino, and I don't know. So we can leave all those things behind and adopt Christ's 
or the biblical worldview. I think the Bible has a worldview because, so we just study Matthew 5, 6, 7, verse 28. Actually, I said, you know, when Christ went through the Beatitude and he gave all those profound theological uh, points, made all those profound the theological points, you know. The Bible tells us, and I want us to do a reading. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. I'm just trying to pull up my Bible. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. And uh, I just want to read that. <clears throat> it says, says um, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Okay, the word doctrine here. I am operationalizing that to mean worldview. Christ projected a certain worldview. He said, bless those that curse you. Do good to those who despitefully hate you. That is a distinctive worldview Christ preached. Okay, Philippians chapter 1 verse 5. Paul tells us something. Very beautiful Bible verse. What can he say? Philippians chapter 1 verse 5 Paul, Paul says said this he said that <clears throat> let this mind see the pronoun there let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus and he goes be, uh, okay verse 6 7 8 and 9 he explains what this mind now come as know what it means so I think that the Bible has a distinctive worldview, a particular word, way of looking at life. We as Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, Ghanaian Seventh-day Adventists, celebrating uh, Ghana's independence, rem remembering our culture, thinking through our culture. Let us not forget that we are, first of all, you know, we are Ghanaians, but we are also Christians, and that it is imperative that we remind ourselves that the Bible has a distinctive worldview, and that worldview is very, very, very exclusive. My challenge to you is that you want to take your time to examine your worldview. Like I say, worldview is not the way you want to look at life, uh, how you treat your spouse, uh, how you are raising your children, whether or not you return tithe, how you conduct yourself on your mifi. Everything is about worldview. If you think that you know, God is God is to be revered, and that above all crowd or most you know, they fall prostrate. Me no me ne better na yami fear ne di kita phone na ne WhatsAppi instead na phone also fetch 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 fetch. When angels fall prostrate, you and I we come. God gives us His grace. We are able to sit before Him, and we don't keep quiet, and we mess we mess around with our phones. But it's all based on the worldview. Who did they say? And God is to be revered. That it affects your approach to worship. Saint Tawa tell me about a certain more, and I say we know being term, you know, and you are trying to settle it. If you know that, look, also your body boy, any upon the bonnet child, that word you would influence your response to be a you know, uh, why a bonnet or why a bonnet or something like that. So the biblical word you proceeds from God. Not man. All other views based on culture and all those things. Culture is a human artifact. See? But the biblical worldview comes from God. And we learn this from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Basically saying, all scripture is inspired by God. And the distinctive worldview that the Bible is seeking to approach, you know, to, um, to advance, you know, that worldview proceeds from God. So all that God is trying to get through his eyes, through his lens. That is why Christ, you know, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7, or preaching all those great, profound theological ideas. 
those who listen to him were astonished because I said, the no muji dni now Christ came and overturned everything, gave them a different perspective altogether. And that is what Christ is trying to achieve for Yamisumu. So as we, we reflect on our culture, I think it is important that we think about the Christian culture. It's important that we think about the biblical worldview, how to learn to look at life just as God sees it, not the way we do. Of course, I'm not in any way saying that this is easy, it is difficult, but here my, my point is to tell you <laughs> what the Bible is saying. I'm not saying that it's easy, but that is, I think, what the word of God encourages us to do. And because we live in the multicultural environment, okay, um, the biblical worldview you know, is not necessarily the popular worldview. And so my point here is that God wants us to see life through his lens. But that is not popular. That is not famous. That is not what everybody embraces. But you have to make sure, say, as a Christian, you are operating with that worldview. Indeed, my point is that Yes, respect other people's worldviews. It's important. You know, people will not always agree with you, and you don't have to agree with everybody all the time. But it is important that don't let go of your Christian worldview. And don't throw it away because of the fact that it is not popular. Hold fast onto it. You see? Hold it because and no and the bad world to be able to go through you know the difficulties and you know the ups and downs that we all experience through life when you'll be any you know interaction and that they don't believe in the worldview you can disagree you can agree to disagree you can respect pe people for who they are what they believe in but you also want them to respect yours and you want them to know what you stand for that's one of the problems I've discovered uh, here in this country, that we want to obliterate anything, you know, that makes an individual stand out, especially if they are Christian. But we cannot do that as Christians. Why must it be so? You don't even want to want other people to know that they are Christian, you know, more so <laughs> if they are saving the Adventists. They want to keep quiet. Because it be all kinds of Adventists that say, you have to come to work on Saturday and uh, they will lose their work. <laughs> so they rather keep quiet and enjoy that. I think that you have to respectfully let people know what you stand for, particularly as a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. You do that with respect. You don't force your views on other people. Let other people know that, look, this is what I believe in. With all due respect, and this I cannot do, this I can do, this I can entertain, this I cannot entertain. I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as you do that respectfully. And if you have the chance to share your worldview with other people, you do so with respect. Um, so by all means, yes, share your Adventist worldview, share your biblical worldview, and you get a chance to do so but don't impose it on other people. See, people will not always look at things uh, the way you see it. Sometimes we don't see things from God's perspective and he gets angry. <laughs> he doesn't force us. Okay, so uh, people will not always look at things from your perspective. Whenever that happens, I think that it's important that we respectfully allow people to believe in what they believe in. And if we have to share the gospel, we do that. But we allow them to believe in what they believe in and uh, pray for them, ask the Lord to work on their hearts in terms of uh, getting such people to be able to come to know the Lord. And so this is a very, again, very simple presentation. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that the Bible is inspired by God. And because it is inspired by God, it, has, it promotes a distinctive worldview. Our duty is to search and seek God's grace to do his bidding, to live according to God's worldview, the biblical worldview, to live in such a way that we look at life from God's lens, not our lens. Why must we do so? 
Ecclesiastes 12, 13 tells us something. I just want to read it without paraphrasing it. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse um, 13. Uh, Struggling a little bit to find it. Um, Proverbs. Okay, I've got it now. There we go. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. For that is the whole duty of man. And to me, um, as we think about Ghanaian culture, my suggestion to you is that adopt the biblical worldview. Certain aspect of our culture, brilliant. We keep on doing those. Those that are not, we have to leave them behind. Uh, we live in a multicultural environment, multi-worldview world. It's important that we know who we, who we are and we, we should freely share that with others because um, by doing so, we project God that helps us to be able to see life from God's uh, worldview. I mean, basically, uh, there might be one or two questions um, that might come from the audience. Hopefully, I can answer them. Um, I'll pause here. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Alex, for information about the MIA. Just like he said, the culture, the, the meaning of the word seems simple, but the influence is great. Indeed. If we have any questions, there's a chance to ask him before we get on the next segment of our program. So any questions, for Alex, about the role of the Ghanaian? Especially, hopefully, there will be no questions. Hopefully, <laughs> Can't ask okay. me some tough questions, put me in trouble. Any questions on culture? I'm a person, maybe, son, and say, Obia, when a world Z, our mansion said, and yes, he imposed a world view on us. How do you explain this in relation to evangelism? Okay. Uh, I suspect that must be Dr. Paul Yeboah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's yeah he's a uh, he's a nice friend. Um. So evangelism is not in position. Evangelism doesn't say or does not mean that somebody must come to believe in Christ by hook or crook. In fact. Uh, on countless number of occasions, Christ went around preaching the gospel, but left a person's decision to decide to follow him to them. And yes, um, when we go out there to share our faith with other people, we share with them what we know the Bible has taught us and what Christ has done for us. So whether or not they come to believe, quite frankly, it is none of our business. Our business is to go out there and share the word in love and in truth. And uh, we leave them to make their own decision. Of course, we can pray for them. Um, there are certain things that we can do to support them in their decision making. But the ultimate decision rests with individuals. Uh, so that is how I make the distinction between um, sharing the gospel and not imposing the worldview on them. Uh, in some other cultures, Christians cannot do that because Christ did not do that. I hope that answers your question, Dr. Eboa. It's a very knowledgeable man, so uh, hopefully it does. (laughs) 
Почему она сама почему она? А меня что, папа? Okay, <laughs> uh, can, I, can I help? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, I, so no, I'm sorry, you know, I think that I don't know what I'm doing. The reason is that if you go to the Sabbath, whether it is a Sabbath, whether it is meat eating, it is not your personal worldview. That is what the Bible says. Where about your personal identity? say, oh, just Sabbath, no? Oh, just the trust some can say say see how many? Now did the only who feel ever be teaching the pan or no? It makes it your personal uh, worldview. But if you are teaching the truth and you tell them exactly what the Bible said with respect to the Sabbath or any doctrine, that is your uh, that is the. Um, Bible view, not your, your own personal worldview. Now, so we church, you know, let's say we know what the idea be a whole week. Oh, yam soon. A quiet be a whole fast, what's going to part? You tell them, say, be a made a Sabbath, me, 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 once we are Christian, you know, the Muslim, eh, can you say more? It is not easy. And I say, when you are Christian, you are uh, Jehovah Witness, eh, didn't come out. It is not easy. One more worldview with respect to what they believe. And uh, generally, trust some so I can't, yes, I see, I can't. It immediately said, if you are telling the truth, preaching the truth, that is not your personal worldview, but that is what the Bible wants us to say. Irrespective of how, uh, they can interpret it anyhow. But says, yes, you buy all Cassano. One more, you know, and they start to say, now all can be different from what they know. Until you say, she, Paul, you've been in bed, you know, they find out, say, one more, more, now more worldview, be a, not a block it, the truth, you know. But actually, I'm a relaxy, you know, a flex of muscles, you know. Or man, you're a man, you're a man, Paul became a changed man. That's it. Uncle, can't you tell me what I'm saying? Alex, Alex, from the basis of culture. Yeah, we're in Afghanistan. My culture is Muslim. And I'm a personal worldview. Because of the culture, that's what I have. Yeah. Afghanistan team, I develop a worldview here. I am Muslim religion. And yam me am a personal view, some Sabbath mean yare, and as a mean yam all those kind of things, you know. It's the way I was raised. Na me men kasa me je achinye se se based on the culture which has become developed to my well view no se ye ni kwain to impose a what belief and keep na others or tell them ani na how do we evangelize yes let, let me let me let me uh, correct a, a few things so Yes, I built the my premises on on culture, but I, I the ultimate point I'm making is that yeah, I'm assuming for you. The Bible has a distinctive worldview we can adopt. I call that the biblical worldview. So yes, born in Afghanistan, Ubanya Mimwa, elements of your culture now, and then you some point, leave all those things behind and you adopt God's worldview, <clears throat> the biblical worldview. And so our biblical worldview, evangelism is just one of them. See, the point I mean, making what Hannah said, 
Okwa bonti na wani ubi koka eko chenye miya samoa. For example, se bia ubi ni humeda ndi na oka humeda na asamoa chile no. Nese mpa konwa nye niya. Nese wuyo supervisor. Mundi mka se wame yu wame yu wadi. Does it make sense? So that's, that's what I mean by trying to impose your worldview. What the, your duty is to share the word, is to spread the word. Tell them that this is not what I believe in. This is objective Bible facts. Sabbath is an objective Bible fact. You share that word with them. But you don't use force. You cannot enforce, you can't, you can't force them to believe in that worldview now we're holding as a Christian. Because when Christ came and he went around preaching the gospel, Christ went around preaching to the street of Capernaum and, and Judea and all of that. He preached, told them of God's love for mankind, where he could heal, he healed, where he could um, restore uh, sight to, to, to the blind, he did so. But the ultimate decision said, one be on still was with them. Christ said, um, any other means it be a torture or uh, threat or fear. So that's what I'm talking about. And he, um, again, I think say, our duty as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, is to adopt the biblical worldview, go out there and share God's word. And in a yen tre tre, and what be I was a wooden born in Pacron. You do that, you do that. I think I wouldn't buy you inside this at that point. Would you must? And I mean, no yagin de play, a friend of mine to be passing. Exactly. Would you must? The rest, say the panel business and Ibian's own San Ibian. That one is the work of the Holy Spirit. You don't come in. Your duty is to be the instrument through which God's word would arrive at the person. The change of heart is not your duty. In the evangelism, you know, I think say, men can say, uh, uh, it's an activity. Uh, we, you know, we we only play a part. The Holy Spirit has a part to play. We also have a part to play. Our part, you know, say, we adopt God's worldview and take the word out there. The moment we do that, the human see. The next step is for God's Holy Spirit to work on that person's heart and mind. Sometimes they change immediately. Sometimes it takes forever. Some people actually never change their mind at all. But that is none of our business. And to me, to me, in fact, yeah, you did your name, friend, shank of four concept. Can it, no, you have to, no. That, that is not, God doesn't force us. We do a lot of things uh, out of God's way. <laughs> you know, so I think that's the point I was trying to make. There was a debris. There was a if you say, yeah, 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 explanation of the Sabbath and the Quran, a team is a senior, it's the Holy Spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah, worldview, you're beating me actually to the mood here. But the result of the idea, no, yeah, Holy Spirit, me, there was it. Not him, who was it. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, please go on. Okay, yeah. Um, my question is, um, I know that you work, your expertise is also in the mining industry in Ghana. Hey, you went researching me. <laughs> that's, that's what they said. That's what they said in the introduction. Um, you know, it's been known, but um, my question is, what do you think Ghanaians should be doing to take advantage you know we always hear about the resource curse in africa they come in and they take the resources and people are just left there penniless um what do you think are some things that Ghanaians should be doing you know they said the oil sector Ghanaians have kind of handled it much better than other countries to a certain degree um what are some things you think that Ghanaian people should be doing to benefit about those resources especially young people do you think more young people need to go into petroleum industry, what, what are some of your ideas or opinions or suggestions about that? Okay, uh, thank you for that question. <clears throat> um, uh, so the, the, the honest and pragmatic truth is that it's, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, the reason is because 
it is really not a question of lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, we have a lot of mining experts, uh, people who do who study policy, people who study, study mining governance administration. Um, so that is <clears throat> our inability to uh, translate our mining wealth to advance socioeconomic development is really not a question of knowledge. I think we have the knowledge, we have the expertise. The problem is <clears throat> the nature of our politics. And uh, I'll just get into that briefly. So um, voters want immediate results. They want to see schools. They want to see roads. They want to see hospitals. They want to see uh, uh, things that signify development. They want to see that immediately. Okay. Uh, development, I think, is best approached as a long-term thing. Now, politicians now are more back power. Now. They know that is what voters want. And so it is actually to the disadvantage of the politician to promise anything long-term. So when we do, we do our, uh, you know, we, we, we extract our oil and we, <clears throat> we mine our, our gold and we get all, all the resources, the first intuition of the politician is to think about how can I how can I use that money to build things like schools and roads and all of that. They do that very quickly so that they can win the next election. Because Omar and Yesa, the opponents in the big issue against them. Do you understand what, what I'm trying to say here? So the, the problem is that politicians want, uh, want to stay in power. And because they want to stay in power, they are willing to promise quick results. And citizens are impatient to wait for long-term developmental things. And so I say, we, are, we have been caught up in that maze. And that's, that's, that's the struggle. Um, in what I studied, it's called competitive clientelism. A situation where citizens want quick results. Politicians want to stay in power. And so let's give them what they want. It might struggle to do anything long-term. Any, anything meaningful, long-term planning, because we just are, in the next four years, no, citizens know, or if you have any future, you who schools near the way to you will lose. They've been on to MP before, because they came to power saying, we are going to stop illegal mining. Now, uh, in the year 2017, uh, to, yeah, 2016, elections now, yeah, no, they won in almost every mining community. In the last election, 2020, they lost in almost every mining community because they're trying to stop illegal mining. What do I say? So uh, both ways. Oh, the politicians want to stay in power. Citizens want immediate results. Um, unless we change that, uh, how do we change that? I'm not sure I have the answer yet, but <laughs> at least we understand that that is uh, one way of making sense of um, our lack of development when it comes to uh, mineral rents. Should a lot of young people get into mining and all of that? I think that there are so many opportunities in the in the extractive industry. So yeah, definitely. Um, if you have the opportunity to do uh, a college degree, um, there's uh, um, do geomatic engineering, all kinds of engineering around mining and, and, and oil. Uh, definitely you can take advantage of that because especially in the case of the oil industry, you no. Know, Ghana, no, we didn't have oil until we discovered it. And the uh, human capacity in terms of the skill sets that you be here as a country to take over uh, the mining, the oil industry, we don't. And so it is a very open space. A lot of young people can get into that, study all kinds of programs that are beneficial to the uh, oil industry and be able to take up positions. We are Ghana and you are the helmet professor. Chances are you do things that will benefit Ghana compared to uh, an expatriate, somebody from the UK or from the US or something like that. I hope this does justice to your question. I have a question. Yeah, it does. Um, I just have one more question. Where do most of the people, the people who work in the Ghanaian oil industry, you know, particularly the foreign experts, where do most of them come from? Are they British uh, or do they come from all over? Hmm. Uh, I've not taken time to study the demographics of that, but 
I know, um, currently I think there are two UK based uh, companies, Cosmos Energy and Talo Oil. Yeah, I heard, um, heard Talo was going down. Okay, Talo was going down, but it's still active. It still has uh, on, on some of the uh, the blocks, the oil blocks. Um, uh, I don't know the 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 uh, the manpower structure for these two companies, but chances are probably they may they may um, they're more likely to hire uh, UK folks. Um, um, so what 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 Ghana has done to sort of correct that is. Uh, a law called local content and participation. So there is a quota, you know, for Ghanaians to be employed within the oil and gas industry. So when companies come there and they start operating, they are obliged by law to employ a certain percentage of their <clears throat> workforce um, from Ghana. And they ought to be Ghanaians. Uh, as to whether we are able to implement that to the, to the letter, it's a different question, but at least we have the law. There are also a number of companies. So we have uh, Aka Energy. I don't know how to pronounce that word. It's A K E R. It's a it's a it's a Norwegian company that came in recently. And the good news, though, is that there is so far one, uh, maybe let me say two. So GMPC, it's a national oil company, and GMPC is owned by Ghana, and so we employ Ghanaians. And there's also Springfield Exploration. Springfield is a private um, exploration production company in Ghana. Uh, for oil. And so chances are they, may, they are also likely to employ Ghanaians. So um, kind of relatively long answer to your uh, very simple question. Uh, hopefully it does justice to it. All right. Uh, not to confuse anybody that joined us late. Uh, this is not a mining channel. Yes. We're talking about not. cultural <laughs> heritage. So. And, and, and Gabra, don't worry. We are actually moving away from fuel combustion engines. So <laughs> Next oh, there, so. Yeah, but anyway, any other questions about uh, cultural heritage uh, that can help? Otherwise, we'll switch on to the rest of our program. Ipacho, Ajwani, um, the question I'm baby saying, I'm not saying you're going to change my visa, but you might be hammering. The me person may be saying that the employee for one time can come with me to um, yeah, no, be a higher way in Ghana, and I got to a timer not youth, Nina, yeah, Bahasa, TSCB, the brain drain, and then now, no, the tables have turned. I said, Ghana, be a pop plant, any pop be brain, mom free, ha, eh, call Ghana. Now, my question, and they say, uh, Uncle Gabra, I had a presentation. It looks like said Nipan Bebre na a year famous from Africa, not from Ghana. A Kamiaka, yes, said Bebre na didn't stay there. Either they moved outside Ghana or they were born in Ghana, and uh, they were born outside Ghana, but they have Ghanaian names and Ghanaian parents, and so they are Ghanaians. And uh, I'm on with me, do baby or move one. Question person beside me said, What is wrong with young? I mean, it's a society now, what all knows that the way you part think, no. Uh, because obviously we don't need a white man if we can do our own things. But in a way, we end up going to them, even if when they don't come to us. The mm -hmm. question in the say, uh, young Kasa, we can do things on our own now. at some point. Do we always have to go after what they have to make us somebody? And I say, mm -hmm. uh, we question the matter here. I think I do. Uh, but first, me dream one and say, Ah, we are saying, Oh, yeah, 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 So, what is wrong with us? A yeah, dream that is a nice yen culture and in yen, yeman, a war, honor, and sing, and I am pe and I am baha because it looks like so. Be a why ye be a why what come out successful no? had something to do with the outside world, not just in Ghana. They had to travel or they were born there and then they became somebody famous. Ah. <sighs> It's a billion dollar question. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me share a few thoughts. Let me share a few thoughts. Um, definitely not conclusive, but some ideas. <clears throat> uh, so there's something called um, geopolitics. OK. 
okay? Which is um, a country's international standing, a country standing on the on the global stage. So, and for Ghana, say for example, yeah, by you and we we are part of that group, and we get to sign some treaties. Uh, we sign some agreements, do all kinds of things. Uh, because we are a developing country, you know, uh, one, one, one idea, a more developing country, a dance, so I said, we tend to export a lot of raw materials. We just produce raw materials, we don't manufacture. We are not into uh, developing services. <clears throat> and <clears throat> for a very long time, we have been caught up in that maze. We just export raw materials. We develop these raw materials and export them. We don't refine or we don't turn them into finished goods in our own homeland. Now, I bet you say path dependence. I say a sabi or want to turn it around. It is hard because the white man is sponsoring your elections. See, Ghana, the electoral commission budget in the bar, US Sikawu, US aid, um, I say, when we read our yearly budget, uh, finance minister can for that could you know read the budget now there's a lot of uh uh foreign contribution a womb and t a balisica for more yen nea hosa nipa be answer one no honor you can't make your own independent decisions all the time now john what what you say and t and you may do her or minor and penny for no they can do uh, they have the willingness to do, but they don't have the ability to do so because our budget now would be a crown, but 60% of that budget, you as one responder. And to you as for the okay, and then you wait, do that, do that, do that, do that. In Japan, sir, you are constrained to a person who want to do something, but <clears throat> global geopolitics will not allow you to be able to do that. Yeah, and yeah, oil. Yeah, oil, no. So far, as I told you, it's just GMPC and then Springfield. Omo Kenya, they are foreign companies. And Omo two, no money is gonna, it's gonna enter on my anymore. The pound sterling and the dollars, they'll just take everything away. So it's a sad reality, but that is the way things are. Yeah, better than Yasano, some people have all kinds of ideas. We will say a revolution, you know, all kinds of things. I think we need another platform to want to delve a little bit into those into for now on day i'll just end with that part of the question uh, the other part i said me <clears throat> um i don't think you have to be abroad to to make an impact it may be good to travel because traveling you know be with me the more exposure and my experience, uh, and my how others do things. It may improve our ideas, our work. So yes, traveling is good. You travel, you learn, you study, you see how the how the people are doing their things. And it is inefficient. You are losing so much energy. Now, why just over? So traveling, I think there is some uh, some merit. There is some advantage to traveling because it be you more. The world view, your understanding of things, saying yeah, we see a take governance in your senior, it can improve because of traveling. Uh, I don't think you have to uh, stay in the US or you want to live in the US to be able to make an impact back home. In Tukofia, yes, there are so many opportunities. Ghana, yeah, I know. You go to Ghana, all kinds of frustrations and all of that. But people make it in Ghana. Okay, people make it in Ghana. And if it, the young, the young people, no, I'm campaigning. Young people, no. <laughs> you know, but just you know, uh, Kwame Despite, you know, he's a multimillionaire. Yes. He never left Ghana, and then yes, Mantanka, he also, he's also a Christian, you know, and, and he told, he said that God told him to make Kantanka cars, and he never left Ghana. He he he, he uh, financed the cars with church money. The church supported. Him. Yeah. Can I come in here? Uh, first thing. Can I come in before the question? Yeah. Okay. 
I guess I can. Uh, yes, we can mention some of the people that were successful in Ghana. Uh, maybe the platform was such that they had that opportunity. The reason many of us are not in Ghana is because we found opportunities in other areas that were not possible in Ghana. Ghana, one of our major problems is the lawlessness out there. If you can work as hard as you want, but overnight somebody can take over what you have, which is not happening in other countries. And then secondly, uh, there's not uh, a lot of honesty in the system. Yes, like you mentioned, you, have to, you can raise a church. The pastor will be rich and the church members will be poor. So let's just be real with ourselves. The reason most Kenyan doctors and others leave the country with the knowledge they have is because they know they can travel to another place where in spite of the hardness or the harshness of the race, they are still able to sleep at night because somebody will not come and take over their wealth which is not guaranteed in our country. So until we learn to go that route, where we take the law seriously, where we understand that it's fair for everybody to have a share in things, we'll do well. Otherwise, it'll just be the few people that are able to climb over others to achieve what they do. Granted, there are a few people in there that were successful. They had a platform to build on. But if you went through elementary school, you didn't have any support. You went through primary school, GSS, finish university, and you can't even get a job. How do you go up? And that is our problem. All these wealthy people in Ghana, they can do more, like how the others are trying to do here in the United States. So that's why it's always easier to go out and then come back in. But the problem with that is even when you return home, life is not easy for you after you've made it outside. Most of them end up going out of the country with the knowledge. So the problem is that we have to sit down and ask ourselves, what is more important for us? Like I mentioned this morning, we have all the resources, we have everything, but our mindset is such that we have to go somewhere or we have to get it from somebody else. And when that one person gets it and is ready to help, what do we do to that person? We just knock him down or we get him out of the way because guess what? He's blocking every, everybody's, somebody's means to wealth. And the few people that have been able to make it there, I don't, I don't want to say it in a bad way, but I can guarantee you about 80 or 90% of them had to step over somebody in order to get to where they are. So let's just be honest. That's what it is. Otherwise, we'll all be back there. Yeah, uh, part of that honesty uh, means to uh, say, you see, there's more than one narrative. So that narrative you've given is, is only one, 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 uh, one stroke. All right, um, and I'm not in any way trying to um, uh, underestimate or undermine what you say. Um, I think both narratives hold. There is success and failure in Ghana. Uh, they all come, yes, a womb. People come here, they, they struggle, they do their best, they make it, they go to Ghana. Some people fail. It is also true at the same time that other people also succeed. So my point is that there's more than one narrative. Um, uh, you want to start a business in Ghana, people start, they fail, they, they are frustrated, the they, uh, laws don't work all the time and all of that. That is one narrative. The other narrative is also that some people also stay in Ghana, push hard and things work for them. And what's my point? I think that, <clears throat> Uh, I think I, I like it when we 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 bring all the narratives on board. See, so both narratives, you know, let's put everything on board and uh, let's try to see how we can balance the, 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 the narratives. Um, uh, a lot of college students, yes, we are school, you know, they, they struggle, they, they don't make it. Um, but I also know uh, research by uh, the Institute for Social Statistical Social and Economic Research. It's a, it's, a, it's a research center at the University of Ghana. It, it takes quite a bit of time, but over time, people make it. A check, yes, that we, we must be honest, a check. But give them eight years, 10 years, they pick up. Part of it, I said, well, many of our structures are not well built. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time, um, but over time, they, they they get around it. 
I, I always I always use myself as an example. Me, I the only time I came to I did foreign education was when I came to the US. So all the buga buga bro from Ghana. <laughs> you are one in a million, but I think my, my point is as a Christian. As a Christian, in order to succeed in the system back in Ghana, you have to, how do I put this? You have to go a different path. You have to overcome something. In, in fact, even putting your son in school or whatever, you have to bribe somebody. So if you uh, really want to be staunch, right, and do things the right way, hmm. like you said, it's going to take you 30 or 40 years because you're going to always be at the back of the line. So yes, granted, some people have been able to make it but I'll probably say those people may be principal, their principles, they have to bend them a little bit to work for them in the system. But if you wanted to be staunch, I always say this, it's always hard for a Christian to be a, a politician because God gotta always tell the truth, right? But they find ways to work around it. So it, it, it's, it's my opinion, by the way. Sorry, I oh, of course, I mean, I, I, I respect that. So the, the, the thing is, it is equally hard for a Christian to be a politician in the U.S. Maybe by US, I mean, I mean, I have been very saddened by the, the nature of American politics. I don't think it's, it's any better. Um, in the case of Ghana, so I had the opportunity to work at the University of Ghana. I was appointed a lecturer. I did not pay even one CD. Did you hear me? Not, not one CD, not, not one CD. <clears throat> and the way I was appointed, normally in University of Ghana, you need a PhD to be a faculty member. I didn't have a PhD, I just had a master's. You know how it happened? One time, maybe HOD, it didn't come out of me, so I said, Alex, do you want to teach here? And so I want to finish my PhD, blah, blah, blah. Also, try. I'm going to the idea, bro. About three weeks later, who will be some say, have I applied? I'm so majoring. I say, hey, you are not serious. The whole thing moves according to the break. And I went and did it. <clears throat> it took about a year. One Sabbath, my point, sorry. Sabbath afternoon, say, I'm a point, sorry, my husband and I received a call. And uh, a lady on the other side of the phone told me she should come for an interview. I went for the interview, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, I got, I got appointed. I didn't pay anything. My papa, my papa, high school, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> what did I say? Nobody knows me. By the time I'm a core Accra, it was my second time of being, uh, being to Accra. <clears throat> I didn't know anybody there. My father was not li linked to Nana Kufado. My dad was not linked to Ken Kenufurata. I had no, nothing. It was just me and my God and uh, God's grace and, and all of that. So of course, mine is just one time story. I'm just, I'm just trying, trying to say, say that again, there's more than one narrative. Uh, because some people struggle, because they don't get it, but I did. So, um, I think we, should, we can encourage people to say, okay, there's more than one narrative and give it a shot. Okay, it may not work, uh, but give it a shot. Um, the fact that you know, there's a high probability that will you be a big failure should not deter you from doing it. <clears throat> Put differently, failure should not deter you from doing something you really want to do. You should do it simply because you think it is important. You never know, you just might succeed you just might win. So give it a try. What's that? And let's put all the narratives there. All right, gonna be you. Amen. Okay, my question and it's there. My question is this, you know, um, to develop something, whether I say we create a business or anything, it is either you the individual or group of people coming together to establish something. Other cultures, you know, you could see that there are a few people can are able to come together, go back home, no more create something. It works. When it comes to Ghana, there is this saying say, Muya do do na makabo muya juma enta nya juma. Eni tino ama individual sa yo Ghana hano, we are not able to put our heads together to put the little bits we have to Ghana both here in Ghana to go to Ghana and establish something. Why is that culture like that? Say, you intimate come together. They encourage establish maybe all the time. The individual and so on. So sometimes you need few people to come together. But usually among Ghanaians, it's in you. Why is that culture like that? What do you know? Um, why? 
Alec. Questioner, I do a visa and obisa as a why. And a young African mindset and intimate why am I in there? You need to say, Beth, my blame now. The continent of Africa controls at least 50% of all the gold in the world. 95% of all the bauxite. Coltan, yeah, yeah, the yeah, cell phone, you know. It didn't be as a baby as Africa. I mean, Africa. So see, uh, the whole world is getting ready to go to war about drinking water. And yet, I put it. Three quarters of the world's drinking water in Africa, like Tangayika, and in Nimian Samunina has more drinking water. Why say Nyama ye here we are seeing another? Nyamedia Maya. The continent of Africa controls 70% of the world's farming lands. Yeah, you bet me feed the whole world. And yet, every two minutes, a child of Africa dies from starvation. We are hard working. Why is it so? I do a question of beside the very day in your independence, 1957, Danwa near GPA at Sochen, South Korea. And ne young Ghana for South Korea junkyard near Kototo spare parts. They are barber fixing a car. The problem, Nese, last year, now we can, I'm saying Gabriel, so no, we can loan the hand back. Just last year, in Kuan, you received 19 billion US dollars in loan. And you had 18 billion dollars in loan payment. We are drowned in loan. With all these statistics, you know, how can the country develop? educate their children, and most importantly, have future for their own children. And in Tinankuruma, when you are independence, you know, what can be said, the independence of Ghana is meaningless, unless it's linked with the total liberation of Africa. Let us manage or mismanage our own affairs. If you say, well, when you say, but the beard and nipple here to live, you know, you made the greatest part, you know, Actually, the continent of Africa. Three times of United States will fit on the continent of Africa. <laughs> and so say, say, one more country and say, your population, you know, you depopulate. China, you know, Europe, you know, United States will fit in Africa. China is only 9 billion square miles. Africa, you 30 billion. China for should not depopulate. Yeni aye aye thirty billion and the yen depopulate. There are fourteen Afro, uh, Franco, uh, French countries. Fourteen in the West Africa. Last year in Kwan, Sika wa on me the French government. Fifty five trillion. On me ko investing in world. I just last year. One million fifty-five trillion dollars, and yet Africa is the poorest nation in the world. The question I do be says, why, why, why? It is the mindset. Uko zoo be more about an elephant to Kakraka Janaho. Now, market a kitten a bonanai. Why? We saw a yakwarano, yet the next chichiri metal, concrete idea what can a neighbor be and chin. Until never bunko to get. Well, elephant now, now the Asawa Karachi said, I was say there's no need in trying. If you say, I'm going bring me, try, 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 my intimate and break it free. It is the mindset of an African. We be better than the Africa yet. Just say, we are well brutal. Any brain drain, no, no, do I can. I had a question we were raising, and it's so important. One my year transform Ghana says in the AC Adankas Yanni yet. Yanni a Babu Chirhani ye ma to say Gabranum. No one must know. We are not going to continue with this life that has been mapped out for us. We're going to change the status quo. Until say, Yanni and I be changed the mindset of the African and Yanni integrity. 
ye nkuruma pem no na ne wo hwe legon vice chancellor no wo nya first class in classics would the obi our year classics i mean you the, the best minds you know one eco here universities will bring can will be our engineering and be team here developed countries you know you are getting your priorities wrong now you are very sad this time no china for urban one minute time for foolishness say see if they are talking about depopulation the continent of africa your money future unless you say a bit change your mindset you are you are missing me no beside the same question why thank you doctor this is what i the question yeah, is about yes yes more yeah chiano uh a senior kind of of come out two narratives right whichever way you look at it you know fault no one side and now say the other side but in the end no, you are right a mindset but my real feet a uncle king's question about the cultural impact other cultures are able to do or help or build back home like we all want to do how come it's very difficult for us Ghanaians to do that? Africa, be other new how factory to produce anything. Toothpicks in Guanacoraya di Frabontin in Ecuador, at the Kogana. If assuming Kurasa is necessary. Senior media can't kind of die in your independence and then will see come more chance South Korea, chance Singapore. And they are coming quite a co honey, a cofani, a mabeton, or macola. The forces in a twofold. Yen your mindset, you know, see a timid change. It doesn't matter which direction the force is coming from within, without. If it's all for will be our only integrity, so on your minister of finance, engineering, for example, last year, like on four year workshop will be for engineers on ethics. One of our countries say, Yancy Dania, near inflated price in three times, you know, I'll offer inferior equipment to the area. Until, say, a bit me, I change the mindset, you know, problem within and without will hold our children's to the future, any future. And I think it's a much more serious in my end, Can I add something? Yeah, can I just say something real quick? Okay. Um, Ghan Ghanaians are not the only people that have a home country that you know, makes things difficult. You know, you know Nigerians, they deal with the same thing. Um, even in China, the Chinese, you know, a lot of the Chinese left China and they went to places like Hong Kong, Singapore, and the US because their home country, you know, they were having a communist purge where they were even, you know, Mao in the 1970s, he was killing all the intellectual people or all the smart people. So, um, we're, sorry, let me fix this thing. So, God is not the only, God is not the only people that have had to leave their country. Sometimes, you know, we, we may never be able to go back, you know, for some of us, because the environment, you know, is not so conducive to what we have. So some of us, yeah, some of us can go back to Ghana and we'll be able to, you know, do what we want to do and make things better. And then some of us, you know, especially the younger people, I don't think, you know, a lot of, it, it, you know, we also have to talk about here, you know, some of us, We'll never be able to go back to Ghana, but also even here in, in Dallas and Houston and New York, you know, we have lots of Ghanaian communities there. What are some things that we can do to make our situation or our position better? We have a lot of smart, educated people here. Um, but, you know, and, and we have a lot of smart, educated people here, but a lot of times, yeah, sometimes Ghana will never really appreciate that. Sometimes they may see us as a threat. Even the Lebanese, they, they, that's something they deal with, you know. There's more Lebanese outside of Lebanon than there are in the country. But the Lebanese, you know, they've been able to make a life for themselves out of their country. So I'm just thinking that, yeah, Ghanaians, some of us, we won't be able to go back. And But I think a lot of us here who are doing well, 
we need to be able to kind of build upon that even here. You know, maybe we can have a Ghana town in, in places like New York and Toronto where um, there are Ghanaians and we can make it a commercial center, just like the Chinese have done with Chinatown or the Koreans have done with Koreatown. So it's both ways. I think um, wherever you are, whether you want to stay in America, whether you want to stay in Ghana, I think we always have to look for opportunity wherever it is. Some of us might not ever find opportunity in Ghana, but even here in America, there's lots of, lots of opportunities. Um, people like Ghanaian food. You'd be amazed that the foreigners, or I don't want to say foreigners, non ghanaians who like Ghanaian food. How come there's not that many Ghanaian restaurants, even Ethiopians? Um, they have 350 Ethiopian restaurants in America. Ghanaian food, I mean, jollof rice, mutio, is, is, a lot of foreigners like it, watch it. Why, why can't we start some Ghanaian fast food restaurants or community centers or, you know, people like Ghanaian, the way Ghanaians braid their, Ghanaians have, have a reputation for being good hair braiders. Where are the Ghanaian, you know, sto hair salons and stores? So it doesn't really matter where you are. I think sometimes um, if you, you know, wherever you feel that there's opportunity, I think you just need to seize it. I don't know, that's just my two cents. Yeah, and thank you, Gabra. I think we're all talking about the same thing. And that brings to my the question Uncle Keynes put out there, that some of us here are trying to do things back home, trying to make things better. And yet we're facing a position because we cannot get a help we need. Why is that the case? All right, so one more thing. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much or hog the platform, but one thing I heard is that, you know, with Africans and just Black people in general, they say we have high self-esteem on a personal level, but for our group, sometimes we don't have, they, they, they say we have, there's two types of esteem, high personal, so personal self-esteem and then racial self-esteem. This was a professor in one of the English universities. He's a, he's a Black speaker. And uh, he was saying that a lot of black people, because of the way we've been, um, you know, the, 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 the propaganda and the messaging, a lot of times we don't really, let's say we don't really love ourselves or we don't love our community. We like ourselves, 